Bev's Video Kingdom is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Bev's Video Kingdom is brought to you by Billy O'Connor's Good Cars with Good Engines. Hey, Chief, you need a good car? One that'll get you to your shitty job smacking bricks around? <laughs> then the Little League game where you can beat the shit out of some of your old enemies? Then off to the bars so you can get smashed out your gourd on piss water lagers? Then maybe even out, outrunning a couple stadies who were trying to give you a shit for that broken taillight? Well, we guarantee you got yourself a good car. And that engine was put together by a couple of Southies who definitely were only a wee bit drunk. So you know it's a good engine under that hood. Because <laughs> Billy O'Connor's put the car in O'Connor. <laughs> Did you say a wee bit? I just was going to say. I love that there's one little bit of Irish mixed in with the Boston accent. What? Just a wee bit. A wee bit. <laughs> a wee bit drunk. <laughs> Otherwise, spot on accent. Get the car. Did that just say Nate Scott, Zach, and Brad? I hope you assholes did not record. I just like press the little fast forward button. <laughs> yes, it did. We are now at our one year show. Today is the one year anniversary show. And we are welcoming officially a new member, Scotch Peck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scotty. Well, you, we didn't uh, let you do a live one. We should have let you do a live one. That was yeah, messed up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw one in later. I'm che- sure. Cheers to, cheers, uh, cheers. Cheers to Scott cheers. Beck, officially as, our, as the fourth on uh, Bez Video King. Of course, you've been around uh, a while as a, effectively a, uh, a staple of the Bez Video Kingdom universe. But I was on episode one. You yeah. were on episode so, one. So, so it's not, you're not exactly new to the game. In and out, I, I was a, a key utility player. As we went along, whenever whatever you guys needed, I was yeah. happy to jump in and, you know, throw in a, a dumb commercial here or there. Or uh, what did you think about the initiation? The initiation was a little fucked up. <laughs> you know, I felt I kind of felt like the uh, the thirty four year old rookie who got called up and is getting hazed by a bunch of fucking twenty four year olds. You know? what, was it? Did, so here's the thing that Scott doesn't know is that the final piece of his initiation was that we we dumped seven puppies in his in his orchard. And made oh my gosh, people. that's the fucking worst initiation ever. If you didn't get rid of all of them, we would have been like, no, I guess he doesn't. Scott got it. Scott, yeah. Scott has been playing a doggy shelter the last week because somebody dumped seven puppies in his orchard and. He's an excellent human being, so he's like, well, I'm going to find homes for these puppies. Yeah, yeah man, it was f- crazy. I mean, you know, being a farmer living out in the middle of nowhere, we get people dump- or things dumped out there all the time. and, and um, You know, they're just like couches and old boats. Right? Most, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> or porn. I mean, <laughs> the porn boats. Great. There's good porn. Yeah, or if it's, if it's an animal, it usually never ends up good, you know, because they're usually scared and it's hard to catch them or whatever. They're usually older dogs. I've actually seen, literally seen with my own eyes, somebody stop their car let a dog off the leash and then drive off. No, Ugh, I, if wow. I was that's like the movies. If I wasn't on a tractor, I mean, you I think they they ran forgot down. the dog. They just saw some orchard porn and were like, "I got to go get that." <laughs> no, no, you slowing me down, dog. dog. <laughs> so no, but fortunately, yeah, we did find my my employee found them and we took care of them and got them all homes within a week, which is insane. That doesn't then don't get any ideas out there, anybody. Never dump an animal. It n- rarely works out well. Yeah, it does. there's not that many scotch, scotch becks in the world. We, we know a lot of farmers, and there's a lot of farmers who have said, I guess I'm drowning some puppies today. <laughs> like, <laughs> no <laughs> jokes. They got dark. They got no dark. jokes. Real uh, dark. All right, so so we are at the one-year anniversary show. So so uh, we sort of quietly uh, we quietly accepted uh, our Nick's resignation some months ago. Yep, reluctantly. Um, but for the, there was a couple. We actually had a couple of couple of people like reach out to us, fans that are that we don't know uh, other than than that they're listeners, and said, "Hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of bummed. I didn't didn't know that you know Nick was off, but got the feeling." And Nick's alive and well. 
we love him. He's still, Nick's doing amazing. He's, he's still just one of our closest friends. Super busy. He's a busy dude. He's I, think, I think we might be going to a, a little a little movie night with him. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. Hopefully soon. He's trying to round us up just to get a little of that taste. Still of that wants to Bevs, watch some movies. A little of that Bev's. So 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 luckily, obviously, we have the ultra capable Scotch Beck now in as the fourth. This creates a little complication because, of course. Scott is our expert judge when when needed, so we're going to start doing a little rotation, I think, until we find a, a suitable replacement. I, I think it's a terrible idea, but I I, I, I just, I feel like, I just, for some reason it feels like Nate's like, I'm going to be the judge. I'm like, dude, I just feel like you're going to pick your team. But then I'm like, oh, he's not drafting. I realize that <laughs> after a few seconds, but I'm like, you're going to be so biased towards Nate's stupid team. Yeah, well, oh, that's it was funny because I, I got tapped to be the judge, the, the first rotation judge for our next week's draft, which is because this week we're doing Goodwill Hunting. Next week is going to be the most memorable Damon characters. That no. Damon looks like uh, he just doesn't grow facial hair. Like he doesn't shave. He just doesn't grow it. You haven't seen the last no because he has a crazy beard that looks like a chin. On Will on uh, on Will Hunting, he looks like he, the most baby faced man like on the planet. He's like thirteen in that movie. How old? How old is he? <laughs> I think he's probably in his mid twenties. Like Twenty four or something. Smooth, face, wildly though. looking, looking, wildly good. smooth, handsome, like, handsome, crazy. handsome baby face. He had like a lot of moles on his like cheeks, and I was like, I wonder if he's going to shave those off. Zach did a deep, vibe, <laughs> deep vibe into, into Matt Damon's face. It was like a this, long close up of his. He's face. like, I rewatched the close up of his face seventeen <laughs> times. Hey, um, being one year though, we do need to like just. I know one of the biggest requests we've had is like, hey, everybody can introduce themselves real, just briefly. Like, I'm Brad. Um, I am uh, the the editor of the pod, so anytime you know we get out of hand, I'm there to uh, make a quick edit and stuff. But uh, other than that, you know, that's my voice. A, a racing fan. Uh, oh, racing fan. Yeah, like racing movies, action well, movies, kind, uh, kind of comedy. Likes kind of weird shit. Weird comedies. Yeah, I like I like things that are a little bit out there, and so that's that's my style. And if you've ever seen a picture of Brad, he looks a little bit like uh, Guy Fox from uh, yes. <laughs> the Guy Fox mask. Guy Fox uh, mask. That's that's not a bad uh, <laughs> with with brains. Not a bad take. <laughs> All right, Zazaki. So we, we're just talking about ourselves. Yeah, just say something. Yeah, I like. Uh, <laughs> lamp. I like. Long, I like. I like lamps on the beach. I love lamp. Uh, no. Uh, hi, I'm Zach. I like. Scary movies. You do like that, and you, just uh, like to, you like to have them make you feel things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's all I got. I feel really put on the spot. I didn't know we, we were going to talk tell, about we ourselves. Yeah, we didn't tell you. So you're oh scary. That's okay. Great. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I can say I'm Nate. Let's see. What do I do? I, I over intellectualize m- movies. Read probably too much into them. Uh, I like romantic comedies, but I'm but I uh, am romantic about the wrong characters most of the time. <laughs> uh, I'm a sucker for sports movies, uh, and uh, you know I don't know what else. What would you say? I, I, when you say I like romantic comedies, but what you should say is I, I enjoy problematic characters. I enjoy problematic <laughs> characters. That that's actually I would say that that is in, that's a more general and slightly accurate uh, position. Nate, Nate's like that that wrestling dude. There was that one like YouTube video of that fan that was in the, the audience. He's like, it's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's trying to hold on to all these like uh, people that have been pointed out as problem. Like, yeah, come on. They're still good people. Uh, if you have not seen that clip, please YouTube that. Uh, it's still real to me, guy, at whatever. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. such a great By clip. the way, since we're just going to go ref here, so, Zach, your wife showed me a YouTube clip that I'd never seen, and I wonder if you've seen it, Brad. It's the, it's the little girl. It's like Southern girl Ugh. comforting the bass. Have you seen this? It's okay. Fish. Oh, it's yeah. okay, fishy. <laughs> it's oh. okay, fish. I'd never seen it, and like I was just crying. I'm, I, I'm also a fisherman, although I never talked about that on the pod. So I, uh, comforting a bass. All those, all those fisherman movies, you know, out there. Well, yeah, that's that's the problem. Is there just aren't enough? You know, maybe that's what I need to write is the a great bass that's fishing saga. There we go. All right. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm Scott. Sometimes called Scotch. Um, I'm a musician. I've um, I love being here. You're in Brad's brother's band, aren't I'm you? I'm in Brad's brother's <laughs> band. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, man. that joke just cool. keeps on going. <laughs> I mean, and that and actually, you know, to help some friends of ours out, Hoisting Heavy's podcast that was mentioned on their podcast today. That whole story they um, did. Yeah, they they brought it up, That's and awesome. it's been brought up many times to me now. But yeah, no, I I love. Uh, just all kinds of different things. Um, I, I'm kind of like your brother in a lot of ways, which is funny because I love putting on a movie that I've seen dozens of times. Yeah. 
and just having it in the background, it's like, you know, it's a comfort thing. So I love comedies, and, and I, li- I also like some, some weird movies, too, but I don't really like horror that much, but I'll sit through it. And Not me. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. We've, we've talked about that. <laughs> Nate's like, hey, you guys want to see Nope? He's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I guess I am going to get sucked in. Right. You should. I, it's not that uh, scary, I guess. Uh, yeah, so 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 that's that. So we'll try to do a little better at uh, now. One year in, we're going to try to you know maybe not quite go into that much detail, but at least you'll know our voice. At least say who's who who's with, who. with voice. So it's we're, interesting. I don't think people care. I think they're just you know, like whatever. Yeah, that's the literally the number one piece of feedback I've gotten is they're like, I don't know who any of you are. You all sound the same. Uh, well, that's more there's no than... fucking way that I sound the same as you. My freaking <laughs> that's what they say. Scott. 80s metal that's what hair. The pe- voice. That's what the pe- that's what the people say. The only feedback I've gotten is from my wife, and she's like, "Do you have to do so many?" <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so many pods? Yeah, I'm like, it's been weeks. <laughs> oh. uh, no, actually, she's awesome. She's super cool and lets me come and do this. So sorry, babe. Uh, so so we uh, so we are doing for our one year. We've been holding holding this one in the chamber, and we decided it's just time to kind of like start firing our best ammo. And so we're kicking off a really really good ten movie run here with Goodwill Hunting. So Goodwill Hunting was has long been sort of flagged as our our one year show, and I think the, it, there are two reasons, and you guys can correct me. One is. It's kind of high on all of our lists. I mean, that doesn't make us unique. A lot of people love this movie, so maybe that's part of it too. Is we know that a lot of our listeners will will, will like the movie, but all of us have this as like a very highly ranked movie in our in our sort of like you know, you know uh, stable of movies. And second, it's kind of, you know the core of the movie is is about friendship, or at least one big part of it, right? And there's four of them, and there's four of us, and you know, there's some some similarities, and so. We were thinking, let's do, let's let's save this one for the one year, and here we are. So this has been one of my favorites, and and we've talked about this before on the pod. I have this really vivid memory, it, like there can be special things that are special, and you know they're special, and you watch them, and they're special, and that's really cool. And I've definitely had movies like that, but there are no movies that I've ever watched that are as good an experience as Goodwill Hunting. And the reason is not because I think it's, it itself is the best movie I've ever seen, although it's close. It's because I went into it as blind as I've ever gone into a movie. I think I actually took my little sister, who's a few years younger than me, and I have no idea why she wanted to see this movie, probably because Matt Damon was in it. That's exactly why. And so... I, was, was he a thing at that point, though? I, I my wife said. My wife said when, when we were watching it, she was like, oh, Matt Damon so, was so hot in this movie. I used to think he was so hot when I was younger. And then she's like, now I watch it and I'm just like, ew, he's a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as you light one up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I watched, I remember, I have this like really clear memory. I know exactly worth what theater I was in and what seat I was sitting in. And I can remember sitting down and like, you know, my sister and her friend there. And I watched this movie and I just, it was like this raw experience where I was like, I I literally almost like couldn't get up for a few minutes because it was just, it was like totally overwhelming to me to have that kind of an experience without seeing it coming. I even think I might've been kind of in a bad mood or something, you know, like I was just like, whatever. Did you have any other friends with you? When I watched this movie? Yeah. No, you said you took no, Amy. no. My okay, sister so, and her friend. I was okay. just me. Okay, so here's my thing, because you came back from this movie, and you were just raving about it. Yeah. And I was like... You were like, never going to watch that. Well, no, I was just like, I was more like, I was like, what the fuck? When did you go to the movies? And like, I would have wanted to go. And I was just like, okay, it didn't work out. All Brad was thinking about was his FOMO. He's like, wait a minute. (laughs) Which is funny, though, because this movie, when you told it to me, I was like, I need to see this fucking movie immediately, which is... So far from <laughs> where we are now, where like you recommend something, I'm like, like I'm not gonna fucking watch, watch that. that. <laughs> but at that so time, I remember very vividly you you were like, dude, you don't even understand. Like, it, it feels like just you know, like our friendships and like just our, like just how yeah. we are in like our small town. Like, it just it reminds me so much of this stuff. And I was just like, oh damn, I gotta see this. Well, and that's it's a funny one in that way because it transcends on that dimension. I mean, this is Boston, right? This is not a small town movie at all. Right. But it has that, you know, like it has that that kind of like transcendent universal feel to it where the connections that are in it make you feel so like you can relate so tightly. And it's not only like a big city movie, but it's also a movie, 
you know, that's a big city and a circumstance is pretty different than the one that we grew up in. But but big city, but they also specify it to Southie, where like right, Southie becomes this little small yeah. community where it's like, I mean, Southie might be big. I don't I don't know how many fucking people are like in Southie, but it feels like all of a sudden this smaller community. I mean, I I teach in a, a uh, an area that's part of a three hundred thousand person city, but the, that community. The South Side, it's like it's it's got its own little kind of identity, and it's like it's its own little smaller neighborhood that's kind of almost separated from separate from the city. So like I, I kind of understand that like the whole Southie thing. It's like you're gonna feel like you're not Boston. I'm Southie. So so Scott and Zach, you guys are respectively older and younger than us. Do you remember the first time you saw it? I honestly don't. I, I know I didn't see it in the theater. Okay. And I don't recall ever seeing trailers for it or really hearing about it. And I. Really don't know when I saw it the first time. Right, so it comes out in very early 98. I mean, I actually think there, were, there might have been some previews in late 97. 97, but. I think, is what we read yesterday. Okay, yeah. it says official I, release is like January of 98. But, but I the wife and I were watching it, and I was like, oh, this came out in like 2000, 2001, and no. I was, I, it, was no. it was not. I think you're right that it's 97, like effectively comes out in 97. It says the official release. IMDb tells me that the official release date is January 9th of 98, but I don't think that's true so so do, you don't remember seeing it either no I, I i do remember seeing it i didn't see it in the theater and i actually was brought to it by elliot smith who does uh who's on who, the soundtrack a lot of the music right? yeah it's who, great. Does a, who does a bunch of it which, and it's also uh the guy from Mongo boingo what's uh danny elfman yeah he does he does the other part of the mu- yeah. the score mm-hmm. which is great i mean yeah. it's really good yeah I, I got I I have a lot of praise for this movie for sure, um, but yeah, I remember the first time that I watched it, it was like, a, man, I might have even watched it with commercials. You know what I mean? Like on that's in, that's an insane take on whatever on whatever it was. But uh, I remember thinking, oh, this is that Elliot Smith movie where they they had like I think the music was up for for a, it was nominated for an Oscar right. and, lo- and lost to Celine Dion. That my heart goes on for oh Titanic. well, there you yeah, go. How you gonna yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I really like music and movies, and I have to say that a I never knew that the same artist was doing all the songs throughout the movie, and b I didn't know that artist was Elliot Smith. And C, I didn't know who Elliot Smith was. Right. So, <laughs> so I really just, after watching this movie bunches of times, all of a sudden, just this last rewatch, I was like, okay, this guy's Elliot Smith. Oh, okay, he's like kind of a popular dude. Oh, he did all, most of the songs where they're singing like he's the same guy. I did not realize that until Here, just here's this a, here's last a, Here's watch. a bit of a hot take about Elliot Smith. Not my favorite movie song. Favorite movie song is in the Royal Tenenbaums, Needle in the Hay, when he's committing suicide. Ooh. Yeah. That that scene is badass, and that song is amazing, dude. Wow, he, yeah. he's got some dope songs. His yeah. I I have I have I mean he's not. You like, seem like an Elliot El- Smith fan. Yeah, he's not he's not my favorite dude because I feel like a lot of it is super similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's got a really beautiful voice that he that he sings with and does a lot of finger picking stuff, and it sounds fucking great. But I have trouble differentiating like. You know, he could do a ten song. It sounds like one long song to me, but I fucking he's dope. All right, so so so, give, where where does this movie fall for you, Zach? Like, give me your take on it. Uh, so for a movie, I mean, it's I think I think in a lot of ways it's it's a perfect story. Yeah, and I love the way that it ends. I love the way that uh, I love the way that they depict the the bro the brotherhood between uh, Chucky and Will. And, you know, he meets the girl. She's the perfect freaking uh, manic pixie dream girl. She's freaking super, like, up and, and, and energetic and makes the main character feel really good about himself. And, um, you know, he obviously doesn't trust her. He doesn't trust anybody, right? But uh, the way that they depict, like, the way that those guys wrote, because, I, I mean, maybe they're super smart, but they don't strike me as, like, super smart dudes. Uh, they strike me as uh, certainly, like, bright and intelligent, but not genius level right yeah but the way that well, they, matt damon told me to invest all my money in crypto and i know i'm broke yeah, now, it, went, so. it went badly <laughs> shit um but yeah dude it, it <laughs> what what ki- what gets me about this movie is the way that they depict the way that a, like an actual genius if a genius just like appeared somewhere the way that like the academic world would react to him and the way that he could react to them depending on his i just thought it was so great the way that matt damon just seemingly is playing every angle at all times but not it's not really super over the top where he's like aha i tricked you you know what i mean it's like but 
I mean, he's uh, the whole interaction with him and Robin Williams and the way that he's just, you know, trying to play Robin Williams. But Robin Williams is the first guy that's kind of like, you know, can be some so somewhat of a worthy opponent to him and kind of figures out the way to get to him. It's just so fucking good, dude. Do we think at some point, though, like that uh, he's going to be there's going to be like a a puff piece written about him. There's going to be some like article written about him or some interview with them. Like, I know you could say, Oh, well, they were trying to keep him away from that, but it seems like that shit would have happened. Like he the, would have, he would have been called out as this like genius from Southie pub nationally. Right. Cause uh, there's if a lot of that kids that insane. realize that like, he's the one like doing this shit. Like it, the word's going to get out. Somebody's going to come like sniffing, like, Hey, I want to, I want to interview so, this so guy. Saying, before, even before the end of the movie, like people would have heard about him. Yes. Yeah, that's probably right. That's 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 just kind of my my take there. It really, I didn't even think about that, but you're probably right. I mean, if he's that, like, they're like, it took us two years. I'm the smartest guy. I've won all these awards. I teach at MIT. It took me two years to prove this with other people's help, uh, and he did it in like an afternoon. I mean, yeah. I, that's probably true. Although, a MIT is full of really smart people, so like, he's very bright, obviously. Right. And 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 the math, the math, you know, the Fields Medal winner, right, Lambeau, can figure out that he's that smart. But there aren't that many people that can distinguish him. And this is part he of the point. He even says that, right? Right. So, so he's a genius guy, but and he's from Southie, but like his background may not be well known. He goes, there's a, "There's a handful of people in the world that'll know how much smarter you are than me, me. and I happen right. to be one of them." There's a thousand but, people trying to get their hand on that story, though. That would, whether it's news I think media, now, whether it's a movie I think person, now, I think like, back then maybe there was a story in like the so, Boston so I, Globe I, or whatever, I and it just kind of goes away. I mean, yeah. This is 1990. This is depicted pre let's, let's just say that it's 96 yeah it's pre-internet there's no i mean no effective internet news right if you so don't read like, the boston globe you don't read the story about the guy that solved the thing on the on the on the wall or yeah. whatever and you yeah. never hear about it and so the, you know spotlight's not really you know doing their thing by then oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> so um all right so, so what about they you? were actually like sh- shoving some shit under the rug right about then <laughs> what about you scott um as far as where this movie yeah like is, like yeah. what's your what's your overall take and where how 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 high is it for you on the list just i mean this is one of the movies that i well, if it comes on, I'm watch it. And exactly. If it's on, it, I at one point I had it on my DVR, which I'm kind of pissed because somehow it's not on my DVR right now, and I had to fucking rent it again to kind of refresh it. I just want to take though, a moment to acknowledge that you still have a DVR. So great. Yeah, okay, that's, that's crazy, cool. bro. I haven't had that in a while. You guys don't have DVRs anymore, <laughs> no, man. dude. They well, have this thing called streaming services well, where you don't even you, just the internet. They, you, they you, have this you, thing you, called the middle of the fucking country where I live. <laughs> and my internet sucks ass. I didn't, I didn't want to tell you about your Scott Beck at AOL.com email address. Hey, it's dude, a little, I can't. I, I can't just, believe you guys look. are farm shaming right now. That's <laughs> fucked up, man. I mean, we've lived around farms our whole life, and the fact that you're farm shaming is, is ter- it's terrible. It's like there's a rookie on the podcast. Brad, Brad's brother's band made it at Hotmail.com. <laughs> yeah. Brad's that. brother's band's made. It. He's got he's got a fucking satellite the size of this table in his backyard to get the fucking internet. Oh, man, he's I like, I'm going to change the channel. Too. This satellite has to move. He, he, but, he, but, he gets, but he gets channels from Australia. So, oh, shit. jokes on you, bro. Yeah. Never in my wildest dreams I think DVR would get me fucking <laughs> chastised on this podcast. Amazing. I mean, there's a lot of things to make fun of me about. What Let's are you, a hundred? Right. Yeah. Jeez. Spend all your time cool. saving animals. How, how's your TiVo doing, Scott? <laughs> you fucking TiVo? <laughs> God damn I had TiVo that. Uh, <laughs> oh my dad! My dad still has TiVo, and dad, I I I love that you still are a uh, TiVo amazing. warrior. Okay, so, <laughs> but I love this movie. It's uh, from top to bottom. The casting is amazing. The acting, the, the writing. I, I mean, so first of all, you know, I, I did a quick little search on IMDb. And these guys really hadn't been in that many things. Oh no, this is like they they held on, held on, held this hostage yeah. so they could break out as actors. So crazy to me yeah. that this got made featuring these two guys that really hadn't had that many big films, and they f- destroy it. They they're they're. I was watching it today and just a masterclass on on how to how to just deliver a monologue because like a lot of the scenes, like most of the scenes are long yeah. scenes. Yeah. And Kevin Smith asked. It doesn't seem like there's very many cuts in them. You know, they're just done and done well. And it's just amazing. I, it, and like you know, Zach was saying, ends right. It just makes you feel good. It's got a, a you know, just the whole movie from top well, to bottom, I love it. Well, and it's unique in that way in the sense that it, it, it ends with a real lack of resolution. Like, it doesn't just 
like a lot of movies, it doesn't feed you the all the things tied up. But hope and yet resolution. doesn't feel yeah, it doesn't uh, yeah. leave you feeling like pissed that it didn't. Oh, wrap the end is the up. best because yeah. he's gonna get there and fucking she's gonna say something. He's gonna get pissed. <laughs> it's not gonna work out. But they end it uh, before you don't think we so? get to. Oh no way! Oh, yeah. I, that guy's I, fucked I was gonna up, bring bro. this up later. Yeah. 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 I, I yeah. bet we get that in alternate. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's yeah. super yeah. smart and <laughs> fucked up in the head. He's been he's been like abused and in, through in and out of foster homes. He's he, there's he. I mean he's gonna have a tough time having a successful relationship with like a neurosurgeon yeah. or whatever she's hard, gonna hard be. To, hard to yeah. disagree. I think this. I think they have. They have. Big and I love their but like you, you meeting think, and everything. It's perfect. Is it's, he, that, that's the thing. The one of the things about it is like he meets this one girl, but like any girl like at an Ivy League school or Stanford or whatever. It's like anybody that's at that upper echelon of education, they're going to meet this dude and be like, oh my God, he's like the rough edges, but he's also brilliant. Thousand they're percent. just going to be just throwing themselves at him. I like disagree, just... and then at the same time, I agree with you. Oh, no. I mean, I, what, I, what do you disagree I, I, with? Do we need to get into this right now? Because like, they're not going to want to go uh, out with a poor guy, but he's got abs. Oh, so it's he's, like, no, it's no, like no. fuck, they dude, want, he has no, no facial hair no, and no, abs, no, no. but he's poor. Okay, there was never anyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there right now. There was never a dude that was sexier ever in movies than, than Matt the Damon moment that in, Matt Damon said, like when he starts owns to defend, that guy yeah, in the bar, uh-huh. and then is like real quietly. But you know, if there's a problem, we just got yeah. to figure it out. Like, is that was there ever a more like juxtaposition, like just punk than that? Like, I will intellectually dominate you, and then if you want, I, and then I will. Do, and if you I want, I'll also kick your intimidate ass. Yeah. you to the point of you like running away with your. That, that's balance. what one, you know, that's why. How she could she not be one on a exactly. truly visceral level? Right. right? Oh, because like, she goes for him, even if even just with the the academic like beat down, she goes for him. But then when that little extra little oh oh yeah. Penny's Zach, wet. Zach, did you not pay attention <laughs> when you guys got chastised? My panties were wet. I'm just saying. When you guys <laughs> well, got know. chastised by your wives on the pod way back then about what a sexy man is, do you not remember? No, I mean, yeah. oh. well. It's all about personality. <laughs> it, yeah. It's smart. No, I'm just saying. I'm trying to hit the table as many times as I can just for Brad tonight. He's freaking out, pointing no. at me. Uh, okay, but. but <laughs> I just did it again. <laughs> Okay, but but I'm just saying that let's let's step back for a second from the from that particular part of it. From which part? His abs or his beardless face? First of all, does he really have? I mean, how are the abs really that good? No, they're not. Yeah, but he's in good shape. He's in good shape. But I'm just saying he's. This is exactly, breaking up breaking well, the, the, up bricks. This, this is like <laughs> the, the, this is goes, harkens back to the criticism I got for picking Brad Pitt from Thelma and Louise in our mail draft, which is. As you point out, when you talked about your 17 rewatches of his close-up of his face. It was wild. He looks like a little boy. Like, I mean, when young, I look at him now, and, and, and Ben Affleck both, I'm, I like at the time they were grown-ups, because I was like 17. Your taste and in now has, like, has matured since You're little then. boys. <laughs> you know, I, I was watching uh, HBO Hard Knocks, like where they have the Detroit Lions, NFL, and they were showing all the all the dudes up there, like like getting talk, coaches talking to them and stuff, and I was like, I told Aiden a couple Hutchinson. friends, I was like, it's just weird seeing that, like, NFL players are starting to look like kids now. Like that's yeah. like, like I'm at that age now where their like, number dude, one these pick, guys that D like lineman, kids. looks like a baby. Yeah, he just, yeah, he looks like a little like looks little like a red haired dude baby. like yeah. running around. He's just kind of a little bit bigger than everybody else. Like, dude. So so, so here here's what I, what I think is like you know what I what I uh, this is another great example. But like I've always loved the friendship element of this movie, and I never get tired of it. So like that for me is enduring. And this is sort of reflected by what Brad said, which is you know there's that. You know, I was raving about how much this connects, that this captures like that connection between, you know, ribbing each other and giving each other a little bit of a hard time and having a level of comfort so you can kind of tease each other. But at the same time, like this, you know, that's like girded by this, like understanding that you, you all have each other's back. That's the only way that that kind of ribbing is okay. The only people that you can tell the most terrible things in the world that you can think of to are people (laughs) that, you know, would freaking fight for you or die for you or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And that's like, you know, you get that right in the scene, you know, early in the movie, right? Where, where they, you know, they jump out to fight for no apparent obvious reason and still it's great but <laughs> he, but you know, but he, he, but he's like, you know they're constantly at it you know they're they're already at each other right like you know chucky and and uh, morgan are you know going at each other but morgan gets out of the car right like yeah. you know you know he's he gonna, says he's not and going those, it, and those dudes are like yeah well, you know there's not even they don't even have a conversation about whether why the guy why will's pissed 
They're usually like, oh, Will's going to fight. I'm going to fight. And, and, like, you know, you can say what you want about, you know, like, there'll be plenty of people that have reasonable disagreements about this sort of physical physicality and, like, violence of things and, like, whether that's just, like, testosterone gone wild or whatever. But um, And maybe it is. I'll, I'll acknowledge it. But for me, I identify with that feeling, right? Like, yeah. I have lots of friends who, like, there's an implicit understanding when that if like things are 20 were, years old. When you're 20, for sure, because yeah, exactly. you don't know, you don't even have a thought about it. And frankly, right, like even now, right, even though like we're not walking around thinking anyone's going to get in a fight, right, there's a real sense in which either literally or metaphorically, right, if you get into a hard spot, the guys, you know, you have friends that are going to do whatever they need to help you out, you know. So, like, I think that for me endures. But the thing that jumped out at me this time that I felt more connected to in that area and in the sort of romance was it's actually a really like deep dive in some ways into the sort of emotional side of that for a sort of a fairly masculine heterosexual guy and a bunch of heterosexual masculine guys, right. That like identify that way and think of themselves that way. Like he talks a lot to Sean about the, the, the like insecurity he has with Skylar, right? Like one of the things that they like really connect on is this idea that he's, you know, he's sort of, you know, worried about the fact that, like, he's going to find out that she's not perfect. And Sean's like, yeah, but you're going to find out maybe she's gonna find out you're not perfect. And he kind of, like, he then recites that to her. You're going to figure out something you don't like about me. And then I'm, you know, I would be in Stanford with nowhere to go. And, like, there's a part of me that's, like, there's a vulnerability to it that it, it lays out that not a lot of other movies do, like, a really serious job of, you know, in that, with that particular type of character. And I guess it's the same with, you know, the conversation with Chucky and Will at the end, right? Like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Right, like there's a real emotional element to that. All right, so anybody got anything else before we uh, move on to drinking with uh, some people? I just want to say that we've gone far too long without really talking about Robin Williams' performance in this movie. Yeah, fair. So let's we shall. <laughs> in I'm lots sure we'll of talk about it in future. I'm sure we'll talk about it, but god damn! I, although, can Robin Williams ben- bench two eighty five? That's a really good question. There's zero chance. <laughs> That man's arms are so fucking long. You can't bench 285 with arms that long he's unless also you're like a pr- He's actually a pretty small dude. Yeah, he's not the base guy. Like, he looks bigger and wider in this, but he's not very tall. No. No. I not don't that that matters. Right? Like, some short dudes can bench a lot of weight, but I'm just saying. He's kind of got that that wrestling build. Like, in- he might, That's I'm the not- thing. If, you, if he's a Southie dude that was maybe a stud wrestler and, uh-huh. like, I mean. He's not. Uh-huh. You see how long his arms are? His arms are really long. <laughs> I, have, I just know they're hairy. I haven't noticed the how chances. Long well, well, I think a better a better question is whether or not he was serious. So, like, I think well, he a, shut Matt Damon up. That's well, that's I think, I, that I think there's a, a good chance. I yeah. think there's a good chance. I, mean, I have com- more comments on this, but I think there's a good chance that Sean was it was a pure psych- psychological move. Right. He's I, like, I, I, I'm going to pick a number that might be believable, but there's no way that Damon can bench. Yeah, because Damon's Damon's putting up two thirty five. Maybe like twice, May- and then, maybe, and then he's like, uh, and then he's like, my shoulder hurts a little bit. I just, I think maybe I should wait till next week. <laughs> I, I'm saying, I'm saying, if Damon lifts hard and he gets in shape, he's two thirty five. The man, he, he the man like throws cinder did. blocks for a living. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah, I don't man, care, dude. That, he weighs like one hundred fifty pounds. The We're underestimating the brute his southeast strength. Takes his, uh, no joke. How, oh, how, how much? How, no, no. How much did Matt Damon weigh when he was filming this movie? One forty five. No, Maybe. 170. No. Are you fucking serious? How tall, how tall is, Matt is Matt Damon? Damon? I don't think you realize how tall these people are. <laughs> Matt Damon's 5'9 if right. he's fucking. Nate, Nate's on the Googles. We got to know how tall he is. Because I think a he's kind of stocky. 5'10". 5'10". Stocky 5'10", 170. He's not stocky. He's, not stocky. he's thin. Look at his shirt off. He's thin but not cut. He I, looks, I bet he you he's 145. 16. I don't know. I, think I mean, later, Matt, with, like, like you, later, grown up Mac Naaman, maybe, but like he's five ten. Dude, a five ten. ten guy with no muscle bulk that's like pretty lean, like he is. That's he, a one forty five year old, uh, a one forty five really? pound person. Oh, dude, you're you're maybe, you're maybe like six one. Maybe. You're like six one. So you and that same body type is like one eighty. But. I don't how how long I, has I it been since wrong. we've seen 180? You know what I mean? Like fucking <laughs> 180 is in the rear view for me, anyways. And I'm I'm shorter than you. I, well, was, this question I, went this, I, this I, whole I conversation went sideways. So let's let's get had, to so, so if let's we get had Matt right into body. the next <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into uh, drinking with the director. Pull up a chair and grab yourself a drink. We'll hypothesize what directors think. Maybe sometimes get a guess makes us look good. Let's drink, laugh, and pretend we know what we're doing. Drinking with the director brought to you by Last Call Brewing. 
God, that harmony, dude. Those guys are must be real musicians. That guy that sounds a live show. <laughs> that guy sounds so much like this guy that's in your brother's band. <laughs> no, it's, it's wild because I, I didn't. Do they ever let the drummer I don't think the guy even speak? <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, so how how many live shows have you now done on your own in the last like? Because you've done. Speaking of, you know sponsored by last call brewing right you just were at last call brewing last week i was yeah um is and it's what's great is my first show by myself was for the bvk ipa release Killed it. That's you, right. you guys are responsible for me actually when because i honestly didn't think that i would play live by myself because i'd never had and, and you love it now i fucking love it you, did, you did a back to back last week like you've got like gigs I've like gigs. right on top gigs of gigs top of so, i know dude the the bread and butter is the originals that are really good, but mixed in with the quirky covers, dude. Yeah, I like the to quirky keep, covers. Kill. Love to keep it a little bit weird. You don't expect yeah. it. Yeah. You know, do, I, you know, large, I do. I have to tell a quick story because this uh, guy, there was a song that I, I I love, and I hadn't listened to it in a while. I was listening to it, and I mentioned it to him. He's like, "That's funny," because I was just at a gig, and this guy like came up and requested it. Was it "Blowjob Betty" by uh, Too Short? <laughs> <laughs> No, it was a, a Steve Earle song. Oh, shit. Yeah, Copperhead Road. Copperhead Road. And, oh, my God, I was just like, dude, that would be awesome if you played it. It's, it's a fun little song. It's pretty simple. This guy at the Hoisting Heavies beer release party. He's like, shout out to Guy Fox. No, all, well, he didn't even say anything. All of a sudden, he just starts playing it. I look over. I was like, like our, <laughs> like our eyes met, and I was like, he just kind of like nods across like, the bar. You know, I do, motherfucker. Yeah. I was like, dude, I just sit there by myself and just started singing along. It was just like bobbing my head, like, dude, you got yeah. Copperhead I, Road for real? Copperhead you know? Road. That's a that's a that's a dick. It's it's about a dick. No, it's about uh, it's called Copperhead Road. Yeah, about Copperhead dis- is like the shape, liquor, of, and the, then later, the shape uh, of the guy's dick sort of looked like a rattlesnake. Or, or growing weed and, and distilling liquor. That's what's about. You know, it's like I, I, I got up there and I just looked at that crowd and it's like I didn't see somebody getting off and I made him get off. <laughs> I made that guy <laughs> get off. This guy, and that guy was Jim did. Yeah. And Brad was the guy. <laughs> it turned me around. I didn't care who was around me. I was like, nope, fuck it. I'm singing this song. We, had a, we had a moment. It was, it was great. <laughs> Dude, Brad, <laughs> what did you put in my glass? I feel like the silliest guy in the world right now. I have this big grin on my face because I'm drinking some soup that uh, you poured into my glass, and it's fucking delicious. Well, I'll let Scotch talk about this because he was involved in this whole incident. Well, yeah, it, it, we literally, myself and Zach, are drinking the newly released Hoisting Heavy Haze, yeah. which last call did a collab with, with our good friends that do another podcast called the Hoisting Heavies. And they're like, how many percent is it? They're like, 14%. All right. <laughs> it's We're a, hoisting heavy. It, it's 8.9. Jesus Christ. Just shy of nine. Josh okay. and Ed just trying to get me fucked up. They're like, oh, I just, I hope Zach doesn't have to drive home. Well, I told them at, at their release party, I was drinking at night. I might have gotten through uh, uh, three rather quickly, which was not a good call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said, man, this beer is dangerous and delicious. And I bet you said, I bet you said, Brad thinks this beer is delicious. Because you know what Brad does? He talks about himself in the third person when he gets really drunk. <laughs> I, I, I'll say, hey, Walter Ramirez did a hell of a job. This hell is like job. everybody that's talking about it is saying like it, it's 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 an improvement from the last one. It's the the Hoisting Heavy Haze 2.0. Gosh dang. I never had the 1.0, but the 2.0 is pretty good. The one, oh, it, the one had just a little bit more like a, maybe a little bit booziness to it. This one is just it's sneaky. smooth. It's sneaky and smooth, and man, at, at one point during the show, because I, I played during their release party, which was I was so stoked to be able to play with them, and they, I was playing uh, Violent Femmes, uh, Blister in the Sun, oh, and my jam. in the middle of the second set, I'd had about, at least three. Because I, I usually don't drink when I play, because I, 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 it alters the brain a little bit, and you start forgetting lyrics. You had three whatever. of these fucking things? I had three of these fucking things. Oh, nice. Dude. I was on my third. <laughs> and at one point, I'm just playing the lick, and all of a sudden, my fingers just weren't working. <laughs> 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 and it, like, and I, I actually, when I stopped, and I got done, I looked at the guy, like, I sit at the table next to me, he's like, look at me weird. I'm like, too many beers, man. I don't know what to do. <laughs> the hoisting heavy haze. So, oh man, it's right. a great show. So you, so you, who all are you? All three drinking the hoisting heavy haze two point oh? No, yeah. I'm actually on on a little bit different. Um, this is uh, the, the day after. I woke up with a little fuzzy head, but I had promised Walter Ramirez, the uh, the uh, brewmaster at last call, 
uh, he needed to make a little trip to Sacramento, and I was like, yeah, let's go, man. So we went up, and we, we visited a few different breweries, but we, the first one we went to was Claim Steak Brewing, Sacramento, California. If you've never been there, I, I actually, I think it's not Sacramento. It's one of the... Like Elk Grove fish? You no, know, it's, it's one of the other little offshoots. There's a few. I'm so not Sacramento. Uh, <laughs> Sacramento <laughs> savvy? Anyway. Sacramento savvy, but <laughs> if we were in the Sacramento area. Look it up, Claim State Brewing. But uh, the actual uh, the brewer there is is his name's TK. He's a great dude. He used to bla- uh, brew at Blaker. He was one of Blaker's first brewers. So uh, cool dude. He gave us some beers, and he gave me, uh, it was a fresh pour that they had just released, the MF and Kenny Hopkiss. Tropical IPA. I like, 6.9%. The, I like the uh, the graphic. So yeah, they do the graphics for uh, for some of the last call beers. They they, they have a beer called the uh, Street Cart Sour that they they have a guy that does the uh, the graphics for all their stuff. So nice, uh, cool graphics. Clam Steak Brewing, check them out in Sacramento. And uh, Walter and I had a great time. That's fucking awesome. So I'm drinking uh, Diet Pepsi and Grenadine. <laughs> Big surprise. But hey, a whiskey in there? No, there's a little bit of makers, but but what? But I I got a, a birthday gift from uh, oh, yeah. Zach and Lisa, and they got me the artisan. None of this Rosa's <laughs> low level stuff. It's artisan grenadine. Artisan grenadine. It says. Oh, I thought that was like kombucha over there. No, no, I know. no. it's yeah. the it's Lieber and Co. Real grenadine. It says crafted in Austin, Texas. Well, you know. When we, we worked on some new songs, you just heard one for the Drinking the Director the other night, and I was very proud of myself because I had some grenadine, and I was like, hey, Nate, look, I have grenadine at my house, and now apparently it's not real grenadine, <laughs> so suddenly I don't feel as cool anymore. Actually, that, it was really cool. I we, we roll in to do our music show, and then on the counter, there's, there's Diet Pepsi's grenadine and snacks he's like i know you like your snacks i was like has there ever been a more neat room than that no (laughs) scott those those chip bags were emptied (laughs) destroyed he's like what we're gonna do a pod you got any loud bags (laughs) (laughs) we were just making music Uh, all right so (laughs) we're drinking with the director some people have requested a drink with uh, damon and affleck so if you'd like to pose the questions gus van zant the director we're just saying we love you gus van zant this movie's amazing but Affleck and Damon fucking carried you. Who, 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 who wrote the, the movie, right? So for anyone that doesn't know, right, they, they, this is their sort of baby script. And the funny, the, the interesting story behind that one, right, is it's originally a script that's like, you know, there's the genius Will Hunting from Southie, but then he goes off on, it's kind of like a, a, a mystery, or like a thriller, where like, you know, he's sort of like, oh, involved. maybe he doesn't, by he the can't CIA. remember. It's recruited by the Jason Bourne. He can't remember who he yeah, is. Yeah, but it's more like, you know, the NSA and he's c- cracking codes and this kind of stuff. And and so I think it had like part of the movie in it, but then it kind of goes off in a different direction. And the early feedback they got was like, no, 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 you, you want know, the do relationship. You who, do you know who gave him that feedback though? Was first Rob Reiner and then William Gold, Goldman, who's like one of the famous screenwriters of all time, Princess Bride and all sorts of stuff. He kind of like co-signed and was like, yeah, take out that NSA stuff, not needed. I also noticed that, uh, you know, uh, Affleck, who collaborated with Kevin Smith? Kevin Smith was like an executive producer on this. They say they, in, in fact, in in pretty recent interviews, they came out and were like, "If this, if Kevin, it wasn't for Kevin Smith, this movie doesn't get made." There's no way because a lot of it was very Kevin Smith to me. A lot of the monologue type stuff. It was it was better. I, I sorry, Kevin, but it was better Kevin Smith. It was like really high level <laughs> Kevin Smith. The the problem is is though the the reason it got made was because Kevin Smith put it. He was a Miramax dude and he put it in the hands of Harvey we, uh, Weinstein. So, ooh, the very predatory hands of Harvey. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and so did. Harvey just washed his hands of all the Hollywood actresses and picked up the script. Well, the, the funny, the, the, I mean, speaking to that point, Harvey Weinstein said Minnie Driver is not attractive enough for the, the lead role. Oh, that's wild. On brand. That's a wild. <laughs> Way to go, Harvey. <laughs> that's like, a wild take. He's like, I want to try out a few other girls. God damn, I that love, guy's a dirty piece of shit. I wonder shit. if that's just I because the she refused to service his chode. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Why would? Yeah. God, I hope she did. <laughs> You uh, hope she did? I hope she did re- re- refuse she it. Refused. I hope oh. she was able to stay <laughs> away from that fucking... Like, that's a wild statement. <laughs> oh, I so, hope no. she serviced his show. No, I'm saying I hope she had the wherewithal to stay away from fucking Jabba the Hutt. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah, that uh, guy's such a piece. He's so dude. gross. All right, so Scotty, I know you got some stuff for the, the, the Zant, though. So what do you what do you want to ask? So, yeah, a couple things I was thinking about was... So Robin Williams, you know, he's famous for ad-libbing. 
And this movie doesn't seem like an ad lib type of film. And so it's like, how much of a leash was on him? And did they let him riff a little bit? And, and was there any ad libbing in this? And so that's, I'm kind of curious to see. It's like, with a film like this, obviously it's a serious role. It's not him. It's not like Good Morning Vietnam. They say, go, you know, and because right. you know, I heard there's just. So you know, su- supposedly the, 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 my wife like woke herself up from farting was ad libbed. So that okay. whole little like, well, that laugh is one of yeah, the, so, my favorite laughs in the one history of, the best. of film laughs, so, dude. Matt so, Damon is laughing so hard and so real. So that's supposed to that, that's okay. exactly it. Is like I think Damon didn't like this was Matt Robin Williams cracking Matt Damon up, and, and like cinephiles have looked and they said that you can see that the camera bounces a little bit oh. as the cameraman was actually laughing oh, in wow. those takes. Too. It's the most contagious laugh too because yeah. we were watching it last night. My wife wasn't even really paying attention <laughs> to the movie, and yeah. we both were laughing so hard with them. Yeah. Th- and it was fucking great. I think it's I the, also read that the the last line of the film, "The son of a bitch, he stole my line," was ad lib. That, that was ad lib. Yeah. But w- w- in that laughing scene, though, it's funny because it almost when you listen to him go into that delivery of that line, it's it, when he completely kind of goes away from the accent, and it sounds like sounds like Robin Robin Williams, Williams yeah. doing uh-huh. doing a stand up, or it actually kind of reminded me of of, of uh, Best of Times, like just kind of like the way he kind of talked in Best of Times. So it was just. You mean don't, the really great movie? Gress- that don't makes me happy. Times? Don't you know, compare one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies, Best of Times. Don't com- <laughs> don't compare those two movies. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino loves Best of Times. And Quentin I Tarantino, who we've all decided after Scott's text the other day, we were like, <laughs> "Who's the like most person that you respect their talent, but you think is the most unbearable human being that's ever?" <laughs> I, walked I, I started that, but he won me back over by saying Best of Times is one of the greatest. Movies ever. <laughs> he actually didn't say that. He just said he loves Best of Times. Yeah, well, he knew you were listening. He's full of shit. He's manipulating you. So uh, earlier you posed Zach like the 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 thought that maybe maybe uh, they don't work out at Stanford. I don't it, think it does, dude. So, but here's my question. Way. Here's what here's here's what I want to know. More core to the movie. Does Will stay in touch with Chucky and with the with the guys? 100%. Are, are they friends that's, forever? That's my. I I could care less about his relationship with Minnie Driver. I'm more concerned about his friendship with with Chucky and and uh, Will uh, moves, Morgan and Will and moves back Billy. to Southie two weeks later. <laughs> I don't. I hate to tell you guys. But he's back, and he's like, can you get me on with the fucking throwing <laughs> cinder team. blocks? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It didn't work out. I, I, car, I mean, But Carr made it, though, all the way there and back. But he had three days with Skylar where they were in love, and everything was great, and then he fucking overreacted to some shit and fucking... Like punched got a little the, physical, punched a hole in the wall. Yeah, for, no. And Chucky's right. like, exactly. Chucky's like, well, you took your fucking shot. Yeah, All hey, right, fuck. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was trying to figure out a good time to put this in, and I think I'll take this time now because we're talking about him going west to meet up with Skyler or whatever. And I have, I have a little theory that it, so his whole leaving because it's, it's interesting because they set it up with he's talking to Sean about how he had this job interview. They show him going, waiting for the job interview or whatever. And he's saying, yeah, I met the, my new boss. He seems like a cool guy, whatever. Then literally he gets the car, and then he's fucking leaving. And so I was theory basically that Will Hunting basically is responsible for the shitty work ethic of millennials. <laughs> because... <laughs> They're if, like, I'm smart like him. I'm wicked smart. But they're like, no, <laughs> I, I got this job and, you know, but I'm just going to go do what I want to do. I'm going to go, you know, see about a girl. And it's like, who, he gets this fucking job. He's happy with it. And all of a sudden he just leaves. And he's like, he did, tell, he, tell, tell the professor that I'm sorry about the job or whatever. And it's just like, that's just not a, a good example. To he, set. He, the only obstacle in his way from going west was not having a car. Exactly, and so all of a sudden, he, once the he, car shows up, all bets like that's I, all he was waiting for. And I love oh, that he, I love I that he takes it. He's young; he should do it. Like, what? Yeah, fuck, dude, I but, get but, it. But bro. it's a bad example. People, you know, kids watching it's this great movie. Example. Like, he was going to get a paycheck, buy a car, and go on his own. So what? He was just waiting for his first paycheck. Yeah. It's the only reason he took the job. Yeah, exactly. And then, so like, I've worked in, in I worked in advertising years ago, and it's it's amazing how entitled a lot of these kids were coming in because I was in my thirties when I was at this job. And these 24 year olds just out of college and they want a raise after like three months. And if they don't get the raise, then they go to another company and they get the raise from them. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, it's literally the most romantic thing I can think of is like fucking off a job to go see about a girl. Like that's the fucking dopest shit <laughs> on the planet. 
<laughs> I mean, I, 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 I never even thought about that, that he kind of like just ditches the job. He, he gets this great job. He's stoked. I love it. He, he likes the guy, his new boss. He tells Sean, yeah, he seems like a good guy. I like my boss. Next thing you know. Fuck off. I'm going to go see about a girl. So these dudes are both Red Sox fans, too. And, and my biggest concern is, is there <laughs> anybody that the fucking really Pedro Martinez era? <laughs> does not go to the World Series when you have a you have a World Series ticket? I've been I've been lucky enough to be uh, at three World Series games. And I can tell you, I don't care who the fuck I'm meeting that night. Oh, you're saying that you don't believe that Robin Williams. I'm going so to that fucking wife. game. All right. Brad, are we bought let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a real question. I think that's a terrible now, You know take. I'm not like a huge baseball fan. Oh, that's also. But figure out whatever it is that I'm a huge fan of. You know I would do that shit. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you thought, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm, but trying I'm, trying think, is, like, I'm trying to think what you would be into. But like, The I problem mean, is Nate's not that big a fan of anything. I, I, I'm <laughs> kind of you have to no, understand. We have to put this in context too. We're talking about Boston Red Sox, who had the curse of the Bambino on. They had not won since, I mean, eras, and this is a chance to like you're describing push it to a game seven where they have a chance to win a World Series. There is no way if you are a legit Southie woman. Boston Red Sox fan, you are not going to ditch your homies, Brad. For a woman. Do you know, I mean, do you realize how hairy-ass, weird-looking, long-armed Robin Williams <laughs> got that chick, dude? There is no way. He fucking won that woman over by being like, I'm going to walk away from this fucking World Series game. Yeah. And as soon as she found that shit out, she was like, oh, my God. He Big sacrifice. This guy. Yeah, dude, that's fucking so I romantic. Baller, dude. I, nah. That's that wins <laughs> honestly, dude. Honestly, we did a draft earlier. Uh, most morant, most, most romantic, romantic gesture. That might be the most romantic. Gesture. Did we not draft that? One it was or? drafted. Oh. No, it was not. Are not you going me? to the World Series to hang out with his wife, Robin Williams. That was a hundred percent drafted. There's a thousand percent. I will bet you all the money that I have in my wallet, which is fourteen dollars. Okay, I have all the drafts on, <laughs> like on my phone. Look I'm looking this up. up right now. Look it up. I am okay. Hold on. It was like Christmas. I think we did Love Actually, right? Uh -huh. It was yeah, that? most it romantic was, uh, gesture. It was our second most popular Liam Neeson movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had to have talked about also. <laughs> it, it did not get drafted. I swear, oh. it didn't even get mentioned. I, I that, he played the also random card. I think you owe Zach fourteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. Oh God my damn. lord! How did we not? That's like one of the most romantic gestures ever. Hey. Right, which is exactly it should have been a number one pick. Point. Which is why it's so improbable. Wouldn't you love to tell the story of the way you met your m wife and you were like, the Warriors were in the finals and I was the biggest fan ever. I was wearing a Steph Curry jersey with my nipples yeah. exposed and <laughs> fucking and I just said, all I of a sudden I saw her from across the room and I was like, I'm not going to go to game seven against LeBron James. And it, I mean, you maybe I'm a different kind lose. of sports fan, but I'm just saying like, you, you didn't no. know they're going to lose. But you, you can tell the story later and be like, yeah, they lost and LeBron beat us. I mean, I went, to, I went to two World Series games with my wife. So I will say that two of them, I went with my wife. The first one, I was like, hey, honey, I'm, I'm off the World Series later. Yeah, but you were already <laughs> married, were married, bro. Man. This is you. You are vastly like insanely misunderstanding the romantic gesture. I, I just, I, I think you're with your friends. You are so pumped about the Red Sox. There's no chance that you do not go to that game. If you're, you got to be Sean. So what's kind of cool about this little scene? There's a little subtle, another reinforcement of how tight of a friend of friends they are. Because the first thing that that Will says is, "Dude, your friends let let you get away with this shit." Like, because he knows that his buddies would not let him get away with it, you know? So it's kind of cool that he just says, dude, there's no way that we would let some guy go off or some chick with this movie. But, yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't so, know. I'm sorry, because there's two things. There's either one, he just voluntarily is like, I'm so into this chick right now. I'm going to stay here. and, and Or, yeah, she, was, exactly or was. she was like. Why don't you just stay no. here with me? Like she's not into sports. She's just like, why don't you just stay with me? Like, like let's just hang out here. Even if she was, just the fact that he stays, it, there's nothing you can do to taint the fucking awesomeness of the gesture. Uh, I just, I, I, I think it was bad writing. I, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. All right, so, 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 so jumping back in though, I want, I want to like, what I want to ask and what I want to like, sort of kick <laughs> it's around. Bad with, writing. With, 
<laughs> Brad's like, if I wouldn't do it, no one should ever do it. Fuck it. I'm just analyzing the characters and saying, like, oh, if he's I, a he, he he knows everything about Pudge. He knows everything about the whole Red the Sox. Everything like you're but that he, big a fan. He's a pretty romantic, but he but he's a pretty. I mean, he's he's obviously pretty stuck on this chick, and he was pretty like romantic about her even years after she passed. Exactly, dude. He even says, are you going to get remarried? He's like, my wife well, is, my dead. is dead. The, yeah. saving, the saving grace is when he says, I didn't know fucking Pudge was going to hit a home run. Like yeah. that, that yeah. definitely. No, I mean, you it, know, okay. but, but, but this is exactly, so, so this, what I really want to get into is like, and I, this came up a little bit earlier where we were, I, you know, did, can Sean really bench 285 or is he just saying that? He can't. <laughs> and I, and I, well, but, but I think, I also think, and I've thought this for a long time, I think he picks a number. Like, I don't think he actually can. And I don't Agreed. think the character thinks he can. So he can't bench that. So he lies about that shit, but he also, he, can le- bench- he also doesn't go with his Friends of the World series. Like, he can, he can than- do that, but he can't bench 285. <laughs> Brad, Brad. He, I see, I, I he think can he can bench it. 285. I think he's a fucking, like, just a little short, stocky stud that just puts it up. I was hoping that we would do 45 minutes on whether or not he would ditch out on the World <laughs> Series game. So, <laughs> so I, I, had a, I had a guy with, sorry little sidebar but talking about bench pressing uh dennis miller a guy i went to high school with he's a year ahead of me i always remember i used to get so pissed because he would put all this weight and he, and he was you know pretty ripped he put but all this weight on do it. and he would put his arms as wide as possible and literally he'd be going like down like like, like an inch yeah. and he had short and ass arms but he, was, but he was benching like fucking 300 pounds yeah yeah and he had these little short arms but anyway it's, it's always unfair. the 5 8 yeah. 240 guy that's yeah. like I can bench 480 pounds. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, because you don't have to lower the yeah, bar range, at all. Your range of motion is four total inches. <laughs> I get it, bro. You're huge. I get it. Um, okay. So, but what I want to, I mean, I I want to dive in a little to like what, what Sean's character is doing at different points. So like he obviously doesn't choke well to make a, I don't think that, you know, that's a, that come, he, he seems to be coming at that sincerely, which is he's 100%. fucking pissed. I think they do a good job of depicting that too. But, but, it, but it, I think they do a great job. And I love one of the things I always notice this little thing is like he takes his glasses off slowly before Will says mm-hmm. the final thing, like you're banging oh, somebody because he knows he's already we're, like, we're getting in on one of one of my Uh-oh. future takes. Okay. Well, so what, but, but all I wanted, but like it, it lines up perfectly, right? Because that scene, those two scenes in a row where he chokes him. Yeah. And then he sits on the bench with him. And he, like, in those two scenes, they're a perfect mirror for the scene that comes very, you know, not very long before that, which is, for me, maybe one of the greatest scenes in movie history, which is the bar scene. Yeah, but the the scene at the lake where they're sitting there looking at the water and he's talking to him doesn't happen if he doesn't. Establish some sort of dominance over Matt. I, I, I told, and this is exactly my point: is yeah. that like the bar scene, right? Is so so for me so beautiful because like it demonstrates this sort of like the natural incongruity between Damon's like physical toughness and his mental toughness, right? Right, and like that. What's that's sort of what makes him unique, right? Is that like he he's this like very scrappy, very like you know bare knuckle guy that can run laps around you about. American history at a graduate level. So Sean, right, in a sense, right, like inadvertently has occasion to like show him that, you know, I'll choke you out. Tell him, hey, not, not only, not can only am I, I choke you out, way stronger I, than you, I'm going to fucking put my hands on you. Exactly. Yeah, That's exactly. a guy that can bench 285. And, and, and I think like the nuance to that point is, is not even like it's, it, see, I think people miss the, miss the point, right? It's not even in the bar that like we're sure that Matt Damon can beat up the Michael Bolton. Club, Doesn't matter. We were pretty sure. It's just that he's like, I, I, you can't just say anything to me. No. Because it, there's going to be a point at which, like, if you challenge me and disrespect me in a certain way, we're going to make, it's going to become physical. Damon knows he's already cowed that guy. So he can say anything he wants to. Right. And, and so this is like, there's a level of respect that comes, but 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 that's not enough, right? There's plenty of dudes that, like, would, would, but would, like, chest up to Damon. But then he sits him down at the lake and he kind of befuddles him a little bit, right? Like, mm-hmm. he explains... To, to 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 will something that will hadn't thought carefully about right. which is that like right. his intellectual way of interacting with people isn't very interesting because like everything he's regurgitating is learned from books and and sean is like you know like you're an interesting person i don't want to hear all your shit because i've been through some experience right. exactly and so like there's like this w- interesting like one two punch that happens that for me is like the the heart of their relationship and so some of what i'm curious about is like how much of this we look at like is he reacting when he sits him by the lake from a really raw place or did he go, okay, wait a minute. 
that happened, but the way that I can use that is to really like soften him up by talking to him about it in this way. And I think that's right. Like, I think Sean's a brilliant therapist. Right? Well, yeah, he couldn't have expected to all of a sudden be like, oh, I'm choking this dude at the end of my first session. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that that wasn't like, planned. <laughs> right. So, of course, at that point, he's got to like, okay, what's my game plan now? Like, I'm he's he's got to like regroup. I'm honestly super bummed to hear you guys say that like this was originally like some sort of weird CIA, like secret agent movie. Because up until this, up until like an hour ago, I was like, man, fucking Perfect Affleck movie. and Damon, they just fucking made this like amazing emotional movie. But apparently they had to be bullied into it by fucking Harvey <laughs> by Weinstein. Weinstein. But yeah, did, you, did, you, did you guys hear the story, though, that that's the craziest story about this whole movie, is that to figure out who had actually read the script and who hadn't, that on, on page 60 of their script, they put a scene between Will and Chucky having sex. <laughs> And some people showed up, like, not even worried about it. Like, people like, yeah, were just like, eh, yeah, we we're just not interested in this script right now. But it's nobody would bring Affleck. this shit up. <laughs> they said that, uh, uh, I think it was, again, Harvey Weinstein that got the, the script. And he was like, I mean, this is great. He's like, but what what is going on on page 60? Like, what happened here? Like, <laughs> so they knew that he had read it. This could be complete, like, uh, 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 I mean, dramatization or some some fabrication or whatever. But that's... That's I read that shit somewhere on the internet. That's just because Harvey Weinstein takes every script and word searches sex, sex, yeah. and then you know he, he was actually like, "I'm that, super but. interested in this." Page like, sixty. There's uh, some uh, interesting. Uh, how material. many how many beautiful women are going to be in this? Yeah. Oh wait, wait, no, uh, guys, guys having sex? No, no, no. <laughs> he was probably like, "I'm still in," <laughs> and did like the weird job of the hut thing. <laughs> <laughs> his tongue came out, like yeah, touched exactly. his like lower jowls. Jar of <laughs> licks his neck. <laughs> what else? Are we, what else are we asking? So. Uh, Oh, man, I, I, something that's always been a little bit strange to me was the choice of Minnie Driver to use her actual accent. And st- oh, it's so good! But it's like it's, it's a little strange just because, like, well, they're all Boston and whatever. Like, why wouldn't she be in America? It's just it's always been a little strange. Like, I, I'm curious about the choice of why. Because Will's different and she's different too, bro. That's why they fucking connect. I mean, Harvard's an international school. I mean, there's a lot of folks that come from all over the world to go to Harvard. I mean, it's it's not like, in fact, she couldn't get recruited. Probably be some, I mean, I, I wonder what the percentage of Boston native Bostonians that are out actually Harvard. go to Harvard. Got probably it, probably small. really low. Very small. Yeah. It just it, seemed like a weird choice when I first walked. I don't know why. It just kind of stuck out to me. It's like, okay, why is she, you know have this accent from you know, that's England interesting because i love I, that choice i don't know i just I, from the very beginning i thought it was just a little bit weird so i never thought much about the choice except that i always love the way she tells the irish joke it's the best it's and i always joke. laugh I because like her her nat- native accent's not irish right it's right. welsh or british something like that but anyway but so she like but i it's think close it's called enough. european bro look at us americans not know <laughs> <laughs> Get I might, but it's <laughs> well. We were just in Europe this summer. We should know this, but it's close enough that she like can do a funny, like she can do a good, legit right. Irish accent in that joke, and it's just great. Like, like the delivery of that joke is one of my you know favorite. And and you so see, Zach, earlier you described. Hold on, hold on. Let me on that same point though. I think also it's like as a British woman who doesn't have a whole lot of friends, like she came like the friends or anything, she's probably considered like a little bit of an outsider. So she's got maybe a couple close friends, but it's like, oh, I can I can attach myself to this guy because I don't uh, have a whole lot of I close don't friends. get that vibe at all from her. I don't I don't get the like I'm gonna attach myself to this guy vibe from her. Well, she, I feel she, like she needs she needs a father figure, man. And I feel like she's kind of leading things. Will's got some authority. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> What about the so you call her a manic pixie dream girl, which yes. I never know for sure what you mean by that. I just mean that it's a girl that you meet that's beautiful, that the main character is always a male most yeah. of the time. They meet a woman that's super energetic, super high energy, super positive. Silly at the right at, times. Exactly. Silly at all times, has something funny and witty to say. That's like the ultimate Manic Pixie Dream. So I, so I, so I think though that that like compare her for example to uh, Kate Hudson's character, to Penny Lane from Almost Famous, which is the other one that's like the ultimate, right? Exact same thing. So, I mean, both of those characters though have a lot of depth relative to no, a lot of female sure. I'm not saying that romantic they can't interests. Be, they can't be dark, or they can't be, or they can't be like a, a deeper character than just a super happy character. But for the most part. 
They're yeah. super upbeat and super happy characters, right? Yeah, I guess I never saw her that way. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and I definitely agree that there's like a depiction of her on the date and then all with the friends. But it was also like, so like one of the things I like about when she comes out with the friends is like she's obviously trying to impress them. Like yes. she's trying to be one of the guys, and in, in a way that like because is, she likes Damon. But but I'm saying it's like in a very real way to me, right? Like it it felt to me not like a woman who just is supposed to be always saying funny crude jokes. She was like, I saved my best, funniest like crude jokes so I could be one of the guys. I think she's and got I, fifty qu- more jokes. I think she does qu- too. Okay. But I'm saying, but I don't think they're trying to play her off as though like she's just this like perfect, you know, kind of like blend in woman. I think they're playing off like she's a cool chick that like has some dimensions. I mean, you know, we all have. We all have wives and women that we know. That I think she just happens exactly to be cool that. like that. Speaking yeah. of of like, I have a question about her. When Chucky goes up to her, his first little play where he uh, he does a little side to side, which is oh, my favorite so thing. Funny. Oh my god! He's looking at himself in the mirror as yeah. he's getting himself got over to that. And they're like, these Hello. Over yeah. here. So he gets up to her and he starts to say like, and she immediately says. Do you come here often? Like, is she just trying to play him? Like, that's what dudes always say. She she knew exactly what he was doing. A a thousand percent. Well, no, no, no. She doesn't ask. She's not meaning to ask him that. Well, she's she's, she's, she's finishing, she's his, finishing sentence. his sentence because As, that's what I'm saying. Is is she just being a bitch to him? Like I don't think she's being a bitch at all. I think, she's, I think she's fucking flirting with him before she before he can flirt with her. And I, and I don't think she's necessarily think interested she's, because she's like, obviously, this guy's coming to hit on us right now. Right. Like, he's doing this shit. Yeah. <laughs> she's not into him at all. She's just playing along. But yes. she's but she's good. She's, she's up for a little. But she's up but for, she's a little, up like, for the banter, yeah. which yeah. makes her the manic piece of dream girl. Because right. even if you're not the right dude, she's still going to be cool to you. She's not going to fucking be well, yeah, cold. Because dude thinks he's coming in to, like, save her. And then she she hates on him, too. So she's like, totally. get the fuck away from me. So. Yeah, so, so I agree that that scene and her reaction to him maybe is the best case you have for manic pixie dream girl. I think all of it. I mean, I mean, I her, know, her, my problem she's with also her not like overly like my problem with her up. is that no, I I mean she's beautiful, but I'm saying she's not like now you're even, now you're you're getting all Weinstein on me. <laughs> <laughs> she's not beautiful <laughs> enough though. Okay, me and Harv just <laughs> talked about it. Oh no! Wow. No, j- just to be clear, I- I'm not saying she's not beautiful at all. I'm simply saying that like the choice of outfits, hair and makeup, like it's not she doesn't. She's not presented as though she's like super done up the whole movie. That's why she's the pa- manic pixie dream girl because the manic like pixie natural. dream girl is like super is like very beautiful, but not. But she doesn't like she's trying too hard. Exactly, yeah, no, that's dude. Fair. That's fair. Exactly. Okay. Well, I, I manic like, pixie dream girl doesn't have to fucking even put on makeup. She wakes up beautiful. I, I'm sorry. And then she's I, super funny and makes you pancakes and then sends you off to work. And then <laughs> after work, after you have a shitty day, your boss talks shit to you. You come home and she's like wearing something super cute and like is like, can I cook you something else or maybe we can go play bass fishing or whatever. <laughs> yours, yours would be go play whatever. Bass <laughs> whatever I'm, you're so, <laughs> I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think that manic. Pixie Green Girl is just whatever Zach's like fantasy of the day. No, is. I'm just saying, like for your for 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 your example, she would be like, "Yeah, let's I'm just no, I, I love it." Like, I, yeah. you know, playing bass fishing is one of my favorite things. To do. I'm wearing an <laughs> apron <laughs> and I'm naked underneath it, and I want a bass fish. Got it. Okay, so um, if that's playing bass fishing, I'm in. I thought <laughs> sign I, me up, dude. bro. You, I, I never wear anything but an apron on my boat. We're moving on to uh, our next category here because as much as we like to talk to uh, Van Zant and Damon and uh, Affleck, we, we've got things to do. We completely ignored Affleck and Damon. That's all right. Who cares? We've I'm got gonna... other things to do. Maybe we got something like... Is it a one-night stand or do you hit it with a shovel or take it home to mom and dad? It's like, fuck, marry or kill. It's Shag Snack Body Bag. Snack Shag. Body bag. Dude, Dude. Doom. So it's like good. a professional podcast. Yeah, who knows what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> One year in, and we were like, oh, God damn, we're professionals now. <laughs> hey, man, I love that song. So uh, somehow, while well, that song was eating a, a hailstorm of snacks, just <laughs> while well, that song was <laughs> eating. I mean, while well, that song was. Do they call that a Freudian slip? Yeah. <laughs> well, that song was playing, a hailstorm of snacks just mm. hit the Bev's table. And so literally there's just we mouths destroyed full. them. I, I mean, there was, there was just a table full of dudes that realized, 
We've been drinking way too much and not eating enough, <laughs> and we have to soak some shit up. Nate, yeah. Nate brought some cookies out that are the sugariest cookies I've ever really eaten good. in my life. Holy and, a, shit. and a fucking 28 bag snack pack of I did of the chips. Chips. I've mm. got type 42 diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna do snack shack body bag, but I'm gonna mix it up just because I can. Oh, oh my god. We're gonna start with body bag. What? Really? I want to know the body bags first. Okay. Before we get I've into got, the rest. Can I go first? Yeah, go. So so my body bag is one of my favorite characters is Skylar in this movie. And I hate the way that she reacts to I mean I mean it's tough to tell from the timeline of the movie how how much time they've spent together. Right. But her reaction to him being like, I'm not sure if I want to move across the country with you is a little over the top for me. I get that she's into it and that, you know, they have this relationship going, but... So you think it's a little soon for her to ask him? No, I don't think the ask is soon. Oh. I think that her reaction to him being hesitant is intense and... I don't know. I don't so, love So you're not blaming him how for m- being how like, I've never been you- out of Southie, I don't want to leave. No, no, no. I totally get his position. Oh my my, I guess my body bag is just the only thing, like, I think this movie hits a lot of, like, the emotional highs for me and that one moment i like it and i and i think her response is something that could totally happen and be totally actually real but i don't i don't like that for her character i feel like she's 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 a rich girl that's been well traveled has been all over the place it would probably be difficult for her to be like Wait a second! You just don't want to like take a little trip. You're just going. To, but, you're, you're not but, even but, leaving but, the nation. But, but your you're point, going. You're, you're going to a no, different state. That's not a big deal. But isn't your point, Zach, that it's too soon for her to be that Seems emotionally quick. invested? Well, so the, my question though is, what's the timeline here? I mean, well, I don't know. Do it's, we have any? Do, do we have any good time markers? If we're like, if we're like six months. See, that's what I'm thinking. Like, he spends a lot of time. He, he, he's, he's obviously doing. Months worth of he, he's clearly have done many months worth of sessions with with Sean, right? Can we agree on that? I just personally don't think that. I don't think that after six months of therapy with Robin Williams, he's gonna like commit to a relationship. I understand that, but I'm, my point is, if it's been six months when Skylar brings it up, that's plenty it, of time. I for agree her with to be that. Super bummed. I agree with that. So, and, and it's pretty near the end, right? When that whole shit goes down, we think. I mean, uh, this is an interesting question for this one because there really isn't a good time scale for the it movie. It seems short. There's another uh, scene that actually it was interesting to me because it kind of the time seems weird. The very first time that Will's doing math with um, Professor Lambeau. And then he goes up to the, and he does the thing. The high and they five. do the high, the high five. five and then he rubs his th- head. And it's like fucking literally the first time they're hanging out. Oh, no. Out. I, 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 it, but, but I think that's, so two comments. One, I always read that as not being the first time. Like, I think right. they're, they're showing us, like, dropping us into the, the, but it, the eighth time. But it, but it literally is the first time, which you don't really know as you're watching it the first time. And now it's like, oh, whatever. But yeah, it feels weird now because so, why is he rubbing his head? And uh, totally, yeah. and it, it feels like it, it actually to me it feels a little out of character for the Lambeau character. Although Lambeau's kind of like he well, he's sort of, looking he's for that weird next dude, the yeah. next, the next. Yeah, he's all over the place. Savant, he's looking yeah. for that that. Secret, well, that he's looking for that next yeah. undergrad that wants to fuck him. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's a, he's yeah so, there's so much of that oh, that's that's talked yeah. about. So, so one, one one take that's super deep here because we, you know there's just too much to talk about here. He's the greatest villain that does like nothing consequentially villainous. Right. Like, exactly. He's, nothing that affects he, the story. He's terrible. Like in a lot of important ways, but in it, all the ways. And, he and sucks it, pretty he much. He sucks, but he's just kind of like he, that's not the point. And so we never see him play out his villainy, but he's a villain. Well, yeah, because he invites that, that one douche. girl that's just like, hey, we want to know who won. He's like, you oh, have you a drink, drink with me. me. In, the creepiest, and then, in the creepiest possible way. First time Matt Damon's in with uh, uh, with uh, Bill Plimpton, like when he comes out, he's already like macking on this girl yeah. that's just sitting yeah. there. It's like jazz and it's or whatever. Just he's gross. just like, <laughs> just so yeah. And she's like, mm, so okay, self important. Yeah, whatever. God, no, so, well, let me, let me say so my, this goes right into my body bag, which is my body bag is. I want more of the the guys together, his homies. I want Chuck. I want I want Morgan. I want Billy. I want them all together a lot more in this movie than the math shit. Like I know the math shit's like important and that kind of sets. Did up you a lot think of the they stuff. were too heavy handed on the math shit though? Because I felt like they did like an appropriate amount of like 
oh, I'm astounded by this math, and then they kind of moved on. Uh, I'll just say the one moment that really bothers me, and it just, I guess it just bothers me about the pretension of, of academia, is when the TA starts consoling that one professor. He's who, like, you're yeah. super smart. He's like, you're a, you're a you're brilliant, brilliant man. I'm like, oh, my God. Like I love that the, part. The, 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 being an absolute sycophant like that where you're just like, you have to, like, you're a TA. You have to kiss ass to all these guys that just, like, you're just wishing you were them. And then getting owned by the Southie dude, and it's like, oh, you're a brilliant Whoa. man. The best well, part of that about that scene is is at the end is Professor Lambeau. He's he, at, he walks out all pissed off because he got and, and, and he's Lambeau's delighted. Like, little grin. He's like, yeah, oh, I fucked over my colleague. Totally, I brought him. I this noticed kid. that this time. Yep. Yeah, he, yeah. He, like another uh, moment of villainy. So he's he's Villainous. yeah he's destroying his colleagues that who probably have a little bit pretentious, a little bit like fool themselves. But his poor TH. Oh, you're you're such a brilliant man. I just. God, I hate that scene so much. I'm like the TA oh. is such a like you know wiener too. You know, like and he tries that's, to like that's he tries one of the like, reasons why I like it. He tries to talk to Matt Damon at some point where he's like, oh, you you just don't understand how much attention he's giving you, and you should be you should be so respectful of that. It's just like come on. Oh, and, oh, and the best part is Lambeau comes in, is like, hey, can you get us some coffee? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what I will say, based on my impression and some very various experiences. They do kind of nail the academia on a bunch of sides. So like, yeah, the grad students that are that that he like goes toe to toe with in the Harvard bar, they both look and act exactly like I would expect graduate students to act. In the grad in the class when he finishes lecturing, it's a you know you know it's a graduate class because he says you probably already have this as undergrads, and they they applaud. No one would ever applaud at the end of a lecture in undergrad class, but you can imagine like graduate students being sort of like. Thinking that he's famous. Oh, right? because he's a, yeah, he's because he's this Fields Medal winner. So like, MIT, metal. fuck yeah, uh, yeah. So the, the, they nail a lot of that stuff, I think, and and including maybe the like TA who's kind of like a little puppy dog, you know, like. Well, he tells at the beginning, he's like, if you have any questions, I'm sure. I'm Tom sure has Tom the has the answers. Yeah, yeah. And, and then all of a sudden that guy's they all like, get up as soon as he's getting yeah. introduced. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk to Tom, <laughs> but still, <laughs> it's, at the same time, Tom's like, I'm the fucking second smartest guy here. And then all of a sudden, he's yeah. like the yeah. third smartest guy here. But that's the that's the best part of the movie to me. I brought it up earlier. Is I when bought the, it back. Yeah. No, 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 not that part. <laughs> the part, the part where where the the villain, like you said, realizes and, and, and admits that like, hey, there's only a certain amount of people that would know that you're smarter than me, and I'm one of them, and it fucking kills me. Oh, when he you know? lights oh, the shit on oh, fire yeah. too, yeah. dude. That is so sick. He jumps on the ground to save that freaking shit that Matt Damon just scribbled down <laughs> and fucking. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, Scott, what do you got? Uh, this might be unpopular. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think. But the interview where Matt Damon sends Chucky, Matt, like, Chucky to go in and oh, I, it's so good. It's yes, suspect, <laughs> yes, suspect. But to it's funny, and I do enjoy it. But it's so out of character yeah. for the film. It almost takes you out in a way, which may be good or not, but. I, I, I watched it this time and I was like, it's just weird. It's kind of stupid. There's no way that three guys would <laughs> fucking be like, well, I got $17. And it, like, they 70, would see $74. Through, he had $74 right. in his pocket. They would see right through that shit. And I don't know. I just think it's kind of silly. So I, I threw it in the body bag. I, I Okay. In defense of that, as, as, as much as I admit, it's, it's, it's the comedy relief that is yeah. way outside of what's going on in the movie. The fact that they were like told that this is this, this rough Southie kid, they just might be like that's the smartest damn, person is, in the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you're not going to want to like like embarrass him because you're like, okay, maybe this is just how this dude acts. Like, I don't once know. he starts using words like heretofore, completely <laughs> wrong, they would say, okay, this like, something's weird. Retainer. Here. This is not Retainer. the smartest. Retainer. <laughs> so okay, keep so. your ear to the grindstone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I want to expand on that. So I'm 100 percent with you on that scene. And and my my body bag is three scenes or like sequences that are totally out of character for the movie. One is that one. Uh-huh. The second one is the fight scene, where they it's there are lots of parts of it that you could think you could object to. The slow mo, the music is a little bit odd. Music's very weird. But that's for, something I had written down is like that's a very interesting choice. But but for me, the key is they do these very weird like slow mo facial expressions. Yeah, and there are things about them that feel very like you know they're very like you're, you're thinking the, the Casey Affleck where he Casey brings down all of a sudden he's like his, his he like lights up after he it, hits them. It, yeah, it's a horrible because like it looks like he does not 
yeah, land a punch at all. It's like yeah, it, so it so like shitty. It's all it's a weird like almost like dream sequency thing, uh-huh. um, and then the entire initial sequence where he goes through the series of therapists. It's a combination of like on the edge of parody, yeah, and totally unbelievable, right? Like the guy, the first guy walks out and says. Well, you know, that, that guy in there is an absolute raving lunatic. Right. No therapist ever say that. Right? Yeah. Like That guy was like the ultimate douche, though. He was, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. and I think that's, I mean, that that's part of the well, point. Well, he, he used words like uh, shenanigans and ballyhoo. <laughs> ballyhoo, <laughs> which is, I, I, do lo- I do love that part. So no I don't, more I, ballyhoo. That's actually in my shag, you know, those words. Are, are I love great. ballyhoo, but I'm, I'm, I think my point, though, is like, and that the fact that they allow the Lambeau and the TA in there for the sessions and all these things, I, th- I think me, I it's, call like, them, it's I th- like fantastical. Like there's no that's there's nothing about that that feels real. I think I called him Bill Plimpton. It's George Plimpton. George, I th- yeah, I think you're right. Because Bill Plimpton was like the artist. Like yes, he's like 100%. crazy artist. First of all, <laughs> Bill, Bill Plimpton has something. Please Google this, everybody who's listening. Bill Plimpton, your face, and just. It's gonna blow your mind. So anyway, so it, it's I see your point, but I think what that's doing is is basically showing that Will is not going to let these guys push him around, and he's going to control the room. I mean, he's the smartest guy. In the he's room. the smartest guy in the room. Every room he walks in, and he it's, it's kind of showing. Look, we're setting this up. This guy's gonna. And, and I, I see he, your point that because the hypnotist is a little bit ridiculous or whatever, but. Um, he's got an edge that if he's on your academic level, if you can't hang with that edge, that's the problem. Right. And, and so when he, when he meets with Sean for the first time, they start sparring back and forth and it, it, it's crazy. That whole, inter, like the whole interchange between Sean and, and Will the first time, it's like Sean will say something. He doesn't answer his question. He'll say it's, he doesn't respond to that question. Right. It's like this yeah. whole it's sparring. But if, you don't, sparring yeah. but if you don't have the first like initial couple of unsuccessful therapists with like, Will that seems controlling less. so so, so, so yeah. to be clear here, I, I want I, I don't want to change that much about those scenes. I just want to like dial it back from like a nine to a seven. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, there's no like, like they tried to make it too funny. Right. Like the guy yeah, like wasn't like, that like funny. if the if the first therapist instead of walking out and saying that guy's an absolute lunatic, just saying like I don't have time for this. Yeah. Right. I'm cool with that, right? Like this guy's like, not even gonna take it seriously. It, well, if, well, if well, they well, hadn't if they just hadn't ha- allowed the the professor and the other the, the grad student to sit in the room while he's doing therapy. Right? Like <laughs> tiny things that are just like they You took, think that's weird? They take, they take you out of it. You're he's, like, wait, what, what's going on Plimpton here? has, if he's a published author like that and, and very famous, he's dealt with some legit psychopaths. Like, right, I mean, exactly. He, he wouldn't be thinking like, oh, my God, this guy's raving lunatic or whatever. He'd, just, he'd be like, yeah. No. I, I don't hey, Nate, what's this. your body bag? Yeah. You haven't told us yet. That was literally just the body bag that I did. <laughs> Oh, the you actually, I thought you were just sad. expounding on what Scott was saying. Oh, that was yeah. Hey, Zach, I was so there with you. you. I, was right? follow, I was following the flow from <laughs> Scott. How many, how many of made. those heavies have you guys had over there? We've had a lot. They're heavy. Who knows? <laughs> Hoisting them. What's your shag? What do you want to take home with you? Wait, now we're jumping back up to shag. We're not going. Yeah, we're doing whatever order I want. <laughs> no, right. my shag is, uh, is the same as my body bag, which is Minnie Driver's character. I fucking think she's just so great. I really like her. I really like her attitude. I really like the way that she kind of rolls with the punches, like throughout whole, like her kind of navigating, going to Harvard and dating weird, freaking super lean Matt Damon and freaking like taking you to play bass fishing and stuff. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you on this. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, Brad. Shag, <laughs> shag, shag it. <laughs> my my shag is is absolutely. We, we talked about this a little bit earlier. It was that. When when Sean first grabs Will by the neck, like that oh, that so establishment dope. of you do not fuck around when you're referring to my wife, who I was with for her, just going through cancer with her. You do not fuck around because if you fuck around, you find out, and that's exactly what happens to Will. <laughs> Talk about shit. To find out. Talk shit. Get <laughs> he gets and 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 the thing about Robin Williams is that he's always been a comedic actor, and so to see him in this absolutely aggressive position. It's almost like you're, you're kind of at first, like the first time you see it, you're like, oh, fuck. Robin Williams is like, he's got some authority. Like, you just don't expect that from him. And so I just, I love that he's just, boom, up against the wall. Like you said, Nate, earlier, he, he, he slowly, calmly folds those glasses up. He's like, 
we might fucking roll right here. This we we might yeah. just throw blows. He knows where he's going. Yeah, he senses it, and, and he's like, I don't want my glasses to break, so I'm gonna put these in my pocket because I'm gonna get physical with him, and we'll see how he reacts. Yeah, and he fucking just owns him right there. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna shag Stellan Skarsgård because when you talk about this movie, you don't really talk about him, and I he is the you talk about him being the villain quote unquote and he actually has a very interesting character arc to me like he's this cocky professor he's the kind of a rock star type of thing where right. it, it, you know he's got the fields metal and all that shit and then he goes to that whole thing where like you're saying with with will burning the the proof that he can't do and you see this very emotional scene with him it, it's a very interesting roller coaster of a character that you know, because he, you can see how much he can't do it. He wants to be like Will, but he knows he's not, and he realizes it as he's sitting there and he's breaking down. He's like, "I just, I wish there wasn't somebody like you. I, I wish I never knew you were there, because then I would know you weren't there throwing it away, whatever he, the line is." And it's like, and then at the very end, he kind of he he patches things up with Robin Williams at the end, and it's just like I, I think it's a very interesting character. He rides that line of yeah. villainry, yeah, well, really well. Well, well and exactly. I mean, this is a, and I this is kind of why I was equivocating earlier when I said you know he kind of like is in a lot of ways villainous, but so he, he talks about he he puts it right. You know, when he when they have the conversation in the bar between he and Robin Williams, right. He's clearly, he sort of says, I'm not sitting here, you know, twisting my mustache, hashing a plan to ruin his life. Mm -hmm. And the hard truth, right, the thing you have to confront in that moment is that he's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Like, he's he's not necessarily thinking about, he's not necessarily doing what's best for Will. And I think to some extent this is Sean's very wise point, which is, you know, if you look at him as a person, you say, well, what does he want out of life? Like, isn't that the agency that you have to respect? But, you know, Lambeau is really looking at it going, like, this is a loss for humanity. Mm -hmm. And there is something, you know, if you have the, a particular perspective, which is clearly his perspective, you think you sort of, there's this either, you know, you either owe it to humanity or there's no greater potential, like, satisfaction than being able to deliver that, you know, sort of greatness to, the, you know, in, in, like, service to the world or whatever. And so in that way, like he's misguided, but he's not he's not approaching it with really terrible intent. And that's what makes it, I think, in some ways, not he I'm a very uncomfortable villain is because like there's, you know, he there's a reasonable argument to be made that like he's pushing for the right thing. Well, that's why it's such a, a perfect trifecta of like adversaries where they're like they're each adversaries with each other. And it's like this this constant like. I have your best intentions, but I'm also going to go to war with you. Yeah. I kind of have your best intentions, but I'm also going to go to war with you. And it's it, it, the whole struggle right. between the triangle is what makes this movie so great. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, so so I'm going to shag. I got to shag the Harvard bar scene. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to sit down and think. I haven't really thought super carefully about it. I don't know if I like. I don't know if there's any scene I like better than that scene in any movie. I mean, I, I, it's so it's so good, it's so great. And I think for me, right, like I, I tend to be drawn in life, um, and in in, and I think you know my my version of the of the pixie dream girl, I guess, is you know cakes like you know short skirt long jacket, right? Like, <laughs> um, you know, so so for me, it's like I, the, those contrasts are really enticing to me. And you know, obviously, you know, I, I mean that, you know, certainly in terms of you know being attracted to a woman, but looking at the character that is both incredibly smart and like capable and full of knowledge, but also really potentially rough and physical and like intimidating that sort of like that junction for me is just so, you know, so, so interesting to watch and it's played out so perfectly there. And then, you know, you get the beautiful like comedy bit of, you know, how do you like you know, how do you like them apples? Mm. It's such a great line, but I actually think that it's earlier that that really wins the scene. Well, it's funny because like I, I have these notes off the side, and I didn't know when I'd interject them. But so speaking of the the bar, did you guys notice? And I've always found it kind of weird, and this time I really I notice it when they walk up to the bar. They the bouncer at the front door, the guy they hey Case, what's up? And they hit him on the shoulder, yeah, yeah. whatever. At Harvard, then they walk in. And so then he's like, 
so this is a Harvard bar. I thought there'd be equations and shit. It's like, well, how do they know the guy at the front door if they've never been to the Harvard bar? Oh. They it's said be, his buddy it, like got it, hired it, over it, there. No, they say, oh. no, no, they didn't say hired. They say Casey's bouncing a bar. Oh yeah. shit! How right? did I miss that? So, okay. so they, yeah. I, and I, there you I, go. my impression, and I've not ever been a bouncer or been really good friends with one, but like in passing, I've heard people make comments that make me think bouncers kind of float a bit. That like it, you know you might look for be looking for a bouncer as a one off, and you you know somehow find somebody that would don't do know it. how I missed that fucking line. There's only one the criteria for a bouncer. That is be slightly big. Yeah, that, that's yeah. You know, early. It's like yeah, hey, Casey's that's gonna be bouncing at a bar. Harvard, that's where go. I, I'll say in that scene, the, the thing that I like is that when Affleck's going up and he he starts doing his little thing, it's like okay, man, don't do that. Like you, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so. And then he starts though. talking you're like oh, dude, you're talking about Elmich. This this looks bad. And then the other guy comes in, you're like, oh, fuck, definitely don't do that. And so he starts bringing, like, his whole, like, little snobbishness to it. And then here comes Damon as the hero. And he I actually in. I actually love Damon coming as the hero, but, it, but, what I, but what I really liked was Affleck kind of really trying to not start shit i man i have yeah. the same he's just like oh yeah yeah dude. yeah it was like it was it was one of those survey classes yeah. he kind of yeah. like taps him he's like he's oh, like yeah, hey man. man how's yeah. it going you know yeah. what I mean? he's super cool for like 15 lines and yeah. it's like this guy wants to get his ass kicked like what the fuck and, and, and affleck was trying so hard to be cool and you ex- sort of expect affleck to be like to be like willing to you, pull let's fight. You know? yeah exactly but he just is like he like doesn't and, and it kind of puts some other things it puts the fight earlier in context right maybe yep. it makes the fight earlier more important which is like he's the first he, he throws the car in reverse and backs up and the first one i mean he's ready to go but it's just because Will's gonna fight, and he's like, exactly. "I'm gonna fight with Will." But he's just not like looking yeah, for no the fight. problem with the fucking long haired. Yeah, yeah, he's from like, Harvard. "You're just being a douche," and I'm yeah. not threatened by that. Dude, like, whatever. And he could tell he was being a douche, but he still tried to play it off even further. Yeah, I, I love. I'll that, say, too. The, I, I, the, the few fights that I've been in have usually involved somebody else getting involved in the fight, and then me joining the fight because I'm like, okay, there's other folks there, so numbers versus numbers you can't let your friend get jumped by multiple people and i was actually in a car one time where we were driving and a buddy of mine saw somebody that he did not like and they had a lot of beef and we le- he legit pulled that car over and said yeah I'm, I'm fighting this dude right now hopped out and within like 10 seconds they were they were just fist fighting and that song that song came on and it went to slow mo. <laughs> well, nobody else joined this. This is just a one on one. But I was just like, I, I was like, God damn! Like, I mean, yeah, good one, honey. It happens. Not, not me. Should have it. Not me. I used to spit in people's hair and get punched for it. <laughs> <laughs> I only have uh, it. Only happened once, but it taught me that if you spit in people's hair, they punch you. Well, that's it was typically, a super they don't like that. Super important lesson, to be honest. <laughs> um. Oh, so so okay. So have we all shagged. We have. Yeah. I think I it's think, time for so some snagging. I'll, I'll jump in on the snag if you don't mind, because it's kind of that whole scene. What I love is the crew being the ultimate wingman and backup. And th- when when he's so Affleck goes up, starts doing his thing, and then Will kind of kind of goes in the background. He's watching, and then here comes more. The other two guys are in the back, and they're down. listening. And it's great because I, I actually spent a lot of time watching on this last one, like what they were doing in the back, and at, they were kind of reacting. And Cole Hauser, his character, he, he's kind of getting closer as Blake. things are getting heating up a little bit. And then uh, Michael Bolton's buddies, he's got the guy with the backwards hat sitting there with his arms <laughs> crossed, like acting all tough or whatever. <laughs> and it just shows you, like, and the minute, like, he, Will Hunting says, well, if you want to step outside, we can figure it out. The guy with the backwards hat just instantly recoils and is like, and and fucking the rest of his buddies are like, all right, are you guys ready? And you look in the background, they're just like staring him down. They have his back the whole time. Yeah. And I just love the fucking crew there. And they, with the, the fight and everything, they're on it. They're going to fight him. They don't give a fuck. And uh, I just love that whole, the fact that they're in it to win it. They don't give a shit. They're going to have his back no matter what. Well, going away from from the boys and and all their good stuff, my snag a hundred percent, Robin Williams. Um, Zach, we were previewing this on on one of our last pods, and you were saying, let's talk about Goodwill Hunting and uh, uh, the best role in Goodwill Hunting and why it's Robin Williams. And I just somebody who has been Mork, he's been all pretty much comedic roles. He's known for his stand up and his just psychotic, like hyperactive. To play such a calm role where he's not 
acting up. He doesn't have to have his little moment where he just kind of goes off and riffs and goes wild. It's just amazing to see such a great acting performance. And the way that he's so insane in his other stuff makes it even more impressive how awesome yeah. he is in these mm-hmm. roles. And I will say, 100% for the rest of my life, when I think of Robin Williams, I'm going to think of Best of Times, and I'll say it again, because <laughs> you know, if you've listened to this pod, Best of Times is one of my favorite movies of all time. And he's so great in that movie, uh, but, but, but damn, not this over is the like, top crazy Robin Williams. Yeah. And so I think this is like his his number two because he's not crazy wild Robin Williams in Best of Times and in this there's, movie there's Best of Times and then <laughs> Goodwill Hunting then there's Goodwill Hunting and Goodwill Hunting and then and everything, everything else. else after that so I, I mentioned some of his other roles that I actually kind of like which would be uh, Mrs Doubtfire um, Aladdin obviously he's like psychotic crazy cartoon character um, Popeye. <laughs> And then Goodwill Hunting. I mean, I he's so, got a lot no of other stuff. Poets. No dead poets. No in, dead poets. Or, or in that or order, dead bro. Poets is like okay, great. Holy um, shit! Really? Oh, Captain, my Captain. His wild like insomniac days when he went like in in, in the, the photo booth, photo bro? booth. Like insomniac when, was a crazy fucking. What, no, no. What about insomniac good, uh, was good. Sorry, how are we sleeping on Good Morning Vietnam? Uh, good that Morning Vietnam. Didn't, didn't, like didn't he high, win an Academy Award? It's like the hyper like. Nominated. I mean, there's there's some emotional parts. My issue about Good Morning Vietnam to take a sidebar here. I heard that he fucking ad libbed so much on that. It's nothing like the real story. It's like the only thing that was like accurate was literally the good morning Vietnam thing right. he did. All the rest of it was like way overblown. Are you telling me the other guy wasn't Robin Williams? <laughs> no. <he wasn't. laughs> Adrian Cronauer. No. But anyway, I, I love the film, but uh anyway. So yeah, I mean that's I, I love Robin Williams. I, I miss the dude. I think it was just like eight years since he uh, uh, he he killed himself, and that's too many years because I wish I would have got to see him in some other stuff. Hundred percent. I he's so great in this film. It, he just he feels like he, a friend, and like he's just the most approachable, loving guy that's going to listen and just give a shit about you. And but what's amazing, and I think true to life, is that he doesn't he seem tortured. Like, doesn't he, see, you know what I mean? Like, That's, in the, in the yeah. movie, yeah, good one. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, By the way, he, he won he won a Golden Globe and was nominated for an Oscar for leading actor in uh, Born on, or uh, in uh, Good Morning Vietnam. So, well, he won the supporting that, that, actor for this. So, at least yeah, yeah, no, that, I'm so. just saying, like, yeah. that, that one's the one you have I like winners, Nate. I like winners. Did okay. you guys see the one where you played like the, <laughs> the doctor that heals you through laughter? Oh, Patch Adams? Patch Adams. Oh, Adams. God. That movie, that's a hard watch. That's an intense fucking movie. That's a hard watch. That movie man. is like, hey, entertaining, entertaining. Dead Fuck people. This movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of like World According to God. Crazy, yeah, yeah, no. World According to God is, is, is a crazy one. And the fact that he was chosen for that, that lead role was part, pretty wild. And then, then he plays, what was it, Jack, where he was like the Oh, dude, that's a good one, too. Where he's like a 40-year-old, eight-year-old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, he's a, he, and and you know what? We're throwing out a lot of roles that are kind of different. I mean, we think of Goodwill Hunting as being this dramatically different role, but he plays a lot of different types of characters. Yeah. His early stuff is much more... Fucking Fisher King? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, no, I'm telling you. That he... I think he's, he's, he has range throughout. Yeah. So so what's your, what's your uh, snag there, Zach? Oh, fuck. Oh, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're still, <laughs> hey, we're, 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 still doing a podcast. we're doing a podcast okay. right now. That, that's what the so, microphone so is. So my, my snag yeah. is easy. Okay. And it's Casey Affleck. Oh, I thought you were, ah. I thought you were gonna I thought you were just gonna go ahead and go with uh, Mini, Mini Driver, Driver for the, from a third for the time. trifecta. <laughs> I love Mini Driver, but no, Casey Affleck in this movie uh. is just <laughs> so fucking every single thing he does is like your buddy's little brother that's like your friend that hangs out with you and fucking double burger oh my god Chuck double burger, double burger. <laughs> dude it's so good everything he does is just fucking i thought i asked you so for a job yesterday on you I did told you no yesterday. i told you no yesterday god it's it's so good and he's just so annoying and just so like everybody's got that guy and it's fucking awesome. But he also kind of knows his role because when he's he's sitting there telling that kind of story, and I just said, fuck, fuck you. And then Skyler's walking up, and he's like, I swallowed a bug. I swallowed a bug. That, I think, also was ad-libbed, by <laughs> the way. Was there's, a, there's a part where it's like panning across, and he's telling a story, and he's like, and then the, <laughs> what does he say, dude? Oh, my God. Anyways, cut that out. Great story, bro. God. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I remember I that part. No, it was, it was inappropriate. I think, I think was it was right say. after a recess. I was just saying. <laughs> um, so, 
my snag is uh, got. I mean, I don't know how we didn't didn't get here, but it's got to be Damon. I mean, and, and and watching it back, interestingly, like I think Affleck's get really good in this, and obviously the, he gets you know writing credit with with Damon. But Matt Damon as an actor, the chops are just incredible. So like I, I was rewatching the scene where they're sitting by the lake, and Damon says all of four words or something, right? And it's a great monologue by Robin Williams, maybe maybe the single best you know William Robin Williams scene, scene in the movie. But it's partly made by Damon's facial expression. You you see his realization on his face especially it's like without saying a word he's like you're an orphan right yeah. and he doesn't reply but his face replies yeah he's kind of got a little bit of a tear going he's moving his lips in sort of yep. weird ways and he's like it's it's a crazy now actually I, w what i'd really like to do is ask our, our friend of the pod robbie who uh, works for american zoetrope and is the editor for uh francis ford coppola I wonder how much of that is editing, right? Like you, you look at it and you say, you know, they're cutting back and forth to the scenes of his face. How much are they picking the right, like exact facial expression across a lot of them? But as you pointed out earlier, I think with that scene, it doesn't feel like a scene that's probably had a million takes, right? Like it kind of has a feel of a scene that is yeah. really where they're really reacting to each other. So, but I think, you know, in general, right, Damon's acting in this is great. It, it rightly launches him into sort of superstardom immediately. And he has a lot of great roles after this, which we will uh, explore in some detail next week on our <laughs> Matt Damon role draft. <laughs> nice segue, bro. I'll okay. say when, when he's, when he's talking with Skylar in, in the whole argument, when he ends up like punching the wall and stuff, like, I mean, that there's an aggression there that he brings that like you kind of, you start to believe him. You're like, it's terrifying. He's, he's been through some like yeah. rough shit. And, oh Yeah. And he's like he's kind of exploding and and, and talking about like, people putting cigarettes out on him and shit. Yeah, Ugh. and he's that, like, you don't want to know about that shit. You don't like and just like it feels pretty real. Like that that conversation is pretty damn good. Second only to uh, Mark Wahlberg and Fear. Oh, <laughs> let me in the house. All right, goddamn. <laughs> so I believe it is time to move along to another category. Nice segue. Streaming recommendations. How about this? Yeah, that's what I'm talking God about. God damn. So good. <laughs> where did we get all these bumpers? Yeah, where did we record that? At? Like, <laughs> man, you'd think we went to some like, professional studio or something. That's right. Uh, there's like a professional involved. musician uh, working that out for us. All right. I got a streaming recommendation. I'm going to start this off just because, you know what? I was trying to think of like movies about friendship and stuff like that. And then I just decided just to take a little 180 and go, okay, well, Matt Damon's a good actor. One of my favorite roles for Matt Damon. Kind of like a similar movie where he's kind of a, a pretty educated dude and he he's going to like show himself, but he's also got a little gritty side to him. I'm going to go with Rounders. Son of a bitch. That is on HBO Max, and if you also had that as your streaming recommendation, that's why I jumped in there first because <laughs> I didn't want anybody else to steal well, it. Well, first of all, it's on <laughs> HBO Max, but it's also on Fubo. Oh, what the fuck? What is the, the fuck, fuck is Fubo? Is Fubo. <laughs> <laughs> that is the streaming wreck that I had written down, and the only streaming wreck I had written oh, down. So I'll have to do some it's googling. On, it's on Showtime, HBO Max, and I guess also Fubo. Fubo. So there you go. But Rounders, Poker, uh, 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 Matty McD. Mikey McD. Mikey McD. Mikey McD. <laughs> and, and one of the worst Russian accents you'll ever oh, hear. Oh, it's hard Teddy, to disagree. Teddy, KGB, <laughs> John Malkovich. Oh, I love that. It's accent. worth watching just for that. Hey, that's me on his money. Yeah, See, that's the worst Russian accent. You've ever no, heard. that's <laughs> um, pretty spot on. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go in front of Nate because uh, I don't think he's going to pick mine, but I'm going to go A Beautiful Mind. With Russell Crowe. Dude, funny. That was one of the ones I was considering. And it does have a little bit of that feel. It makes me think of it. I love the, like, oh, my God, this guy's smarter than everybody. I love that shit. And uh, both these movies have that. But they also, like, pump up the uh, psychoticness up to, like, a thousand in that movie. Yeah, but that's awesome. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of chalkboard. My wife was like, Equations. I hate the sound of the chalkboard. I like that. I like the sound of that chalk going across the chalk. That's a good. I, I, that's a solid pick. I'm not. I haven't seen that in a while too. I might follow your advice and go watch it. HBO Max. So I'm going to throw. Uh, this one is maybe the most different character that he's ever played. That Damon has ever played, and that's The Departed. Ugh. 
So, so I, be, for that reason, if you want more Damon, but a really, really different uh, approach, you want to go watch The Departed on Netflix or HBO Max. Most different in what way? Well, I mean, he's sort of like super slimy, super... Um, he's the villain, kind of villainous, and but, but it's weird. Not, that, not. I wouldn't say he's dumb, but he's not that bright. You know. Okay. What What's weird about it is like it's it's like you kind of used to Matt Damon being the good guy. Yeah, and you, he's and a you're bad not, guy. You're not ready for him to be. And the he bad plays guy. a great bad no, guy. That's yeah. True. yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. the character. I'm just yeah, saying, so I, there, I didn't think so it was that yeah, so there, much of a reach. There you go, Brad. Eat that. <laughs> All right. My bad. <laughs> Jesus. Damn. In your face. Guess I'm not pandering to the judge right now. <laughs> uh, Foreshadowing happening here. Uh, all right. Uh, Scotch bag. Do you, do you, 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 you just co-sign, man. Just co-sign. Co-sign, uh, co-sign uh, Rounders. Yeah, Rounders, it's it's uh, Will Hunting Jr. Um, it's very similar. I love it. It's one of those just, uh, you don't have to be a poker fan to appreciate I'm not really a poker player, but um, I love Actually, it's better if you're not much of a poker player right. because you'll be like, God damn, these hands are amazing. Because you don't scrutinize the right. fucking, oh, he's got a straight flush. <laughs> Edward Norton is is amazing in it as Worm, his buddy, and, and John Chaturro is a great character as well. Every, everybody in that movie is awesome, so Rounders on Fubo. Yeah, when you're like, oh, I mean, any good poker player is going to lose all their money there because <laughs> you, yep. you don't expect him to all of a sudden have a full house. This guy folds his four of a kind. <laughs> all right, Nate. You, you you disappeared all of a sudden. Yeah, I was l- looking at something on my phone. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is Fubo? <laughs> um, okay, so oh, I believe we might be on to our final category of the evening. No jet watch for Maverick, Mexico on that goose stick. Iceberg list Titanic, Leo's drawing that nude shit. Jim fucks Nadia like we all thought he should. Ricky and Doughboy get the fuck out the hood. Luke hooks up with Leia just like he's intending. It's time for a reshelf and alternate endings. <laughs> it's so good. What? 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 I mean, uh, uh, what producers got a hold of that, our, our, our bumpers? That, that beat, dude. Dude, that's dude. hard, bro. Stockton Cali. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> who's, spitting, who's spitting those rhymes? I don't know who's got those bars, but geez. Somebody with dope braids. Man, those guys might need to get SoundCloud. <laughs> All right. The guy Fox knows how to spit that shit. All right. Who, who's, got, who's got the alternate endings? Well, I, I'll, I'll just start off because mine's not really an alternate ending. It's just the Four fact regional. that it's the fact that you have Jay and Silent Bob strike back. They decide to bring back the the whole Goodwill Hunting crew, including Michael Bolton or whatever his name is. They all come back and they have the bar scene part two, when all of a sudden the ponytail dude starts like getting the upper hand on Will and Chucky and Will get a little nervous, and Will knows how to answer that because he brings out the shotgun. So they did they really do this? Do, do, do am I remembering that they did some? Never seen this movie. All so of them are involved. All the actual actors are involved. Yeah. Uh, Gus Van Zant is actually involved as well. Oh. He's counting his screen money instead. So it's 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 got a funny little cameo from Gus Van Zant. And that's the alternate ending I love. It's it's Goodwill Hunting Part Two, a hunting <laughs> season, and they blow away the applesauce dude. He goes, Applesauce, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. So that's that's the alternate ending I love. I'm glad that they got to do that in uh in a Kevin Smith movie. The alternate ending has to be like the movie's 30 minutes longer and we see will just go and freak out on her and uh in fucking palo alto they're just like they're just like all of a sudden in this like super ritzy i don't know if you guys have ever been in stanford campus but uh, like, i have it's oh dude it's like nice. super nice and you like you venture off campus and all of a sudden you're in this like crazy ritzy place where you get like a piece of bread is like 47 dollars, <laughs> and uh i think he just loses his mind like Eight seconds after he gets there, and he's just like, "I'm going back to hang out with my friends," and throws throw cinder box off a building. I think it's probably a true story. Yeah, thousand percent. I'm so I, here's what I here's what I want as the alternate ending. So, I like movies that do give me that like closure, but I don't want to see the next like two months. No, neither do I. That's I, why it's a perfect movie. <laughs> no, I because want. They I, 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 I want him to like bring us back in like six years and see what's what they're all doing. Oh, and see him like drinking himself. He's got like 
diabetes. <laughs> he's got his half his foot <laughs> cut off. No, like I want to see like Morgan married to uh, Kathy, you know, and they're down at the ball field, you know, watching watching you know somebody play t ball, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want him beating fucking Mark Zuckerberg's ass. Like Mark Zuckerberg's like student, and he's just like at a bar, and all of a sudden <laughs> here comes Will Hunting, and he's like, "Oh, you think you're fucking smart, huh?" Yeah, <laughs> like, Beats up up just Zuckerberg. beating the fuck out of My Zuckerberg. My boy's wicked smart. No, I, so I I, I, I want to go the other direction. I think I think the, they 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 meet uh, they meet you know Billy and and uh, and uh, Chucky are still single dudes just working the demo team. And then, you know, the four of them, you know, Morgan and, and Kathy and the four of them are in the bar and you're like, I'm not sure. And then Will rolls in and you're like, oh, Will's back. And Skyler comes in with him. Oh, she She's back in, in like, Boston. Yeah. She's doing a residency. They're together. Will is, uh, he's, he's finishing his PhD in mathematics at uh, MIT. No. Nah. I don't Fuck think that he, movie. I don't <laughs> think he has to finish it. That's my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my That's my happy ending, no? No one? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't go. Good. All right, fine. <laughs> F- fine. Then Goodwill Hunting till dawn. And, you know, the, <laughs> I feel like if he, the, the, he, a bunch of vampires try to take him down in his uh, new car when he tries to leave town. Lambo and all his crew is a bunch of a bunch vampires. Of vampires. So, for sure. so a bunch of vampires show up and then Will fucking, yeah, like, pulls, he, he pulls up an apple cart and he's like, how do you like them apples, fucking vampires? And he starts killing so those apples. Throw, throwing van- apples that have spikes <laughs> sticking out of them. Yeah, I will yeah. say, I mean, we, when we're talking about baseball throws, when they're in the batting cage and he, he's... He, Dude, his, his Matt Damon has not legit. bad. It's yeah. better than Car- Charlie Sheen. He's got a nice little It's like, a better little than Charlie Sheen going. in Major League. Stop brushing better me than, back. Better than stop Charlie counting Sheen. the plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say that Affleck's swing is whack as fuck, and like obviously he, does didn't he ever play much even get to league. swing. Like he, he swung like three like times, three and times. it's like it's when like he, real, real like there's no there's no rotation to it. It's bad. Well, when he runs out there to fight him, and then he's doing like the whole Boston Celtics, like the little like fighting Irish, like or the yeah, <laughs> he's got his like arms up like he's like a 1920s boxer. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> dropping. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get a laugh, but it was just was dead silence. <laughs> if we're going, if we're going best pitching motion in a movie, I think Damon's up there. Wait, are we not? Have we forgotten that uh, um, Kevin Costner is, is a lot is a, around? I, I, I thought you were gonna say Freddie Prince Jr., but okay. Oh. Is that, is that disrespecting <laughs> Charlie Sheen over here was bad because Charlie Sheen's the best. Charlie Sheen's really good, yeah. but I think that Matt Damon's motion is better. It didn't look bad. <laughs> All right. So, uh, wait, wait, back. Scotch, what do you got? Reach I got, off? I got, yeah, not, I got, n- I mean, other than the fact that he doesn't go see about a girl and you see him just crunching numbers at the CIA. Yeah, and so you're being just, a responsible millennial. And then at the end of the day, he just takes a gun to his head because he just can't handle it anymore. But. Well, yeah, but you know what? what the, the thing that we did it's fucking forget, dark, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing. You guys made me talk. The Jeez. thing that we did forget is we're talking about these endings, but we didn't even talk about a, a, you know an alternate ending song, uh-huh. which is very important because, you know, he drives off and you've got a nice little, I think it's an Elliott Smith song playing, and it's like, okay, it's all magical and great and everything. I think that that's the song that everybody talks about as he's driving away. Like that's the song that everybody's stoked about. Well, I mean, this is a Boston movie, right? Why, why, why? When he just starts taking off, why is all of a sudden? No, 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 wait, fuck! I just fucked that up. You started doing it, and then it fucked me up. Um you didn't get your mouth guitar <laughs> going the way you wanted when it to. Wait, I was in when he court. starts driving away, I was in. I was playing. Jan, Jan. No, see, I'm, I keep going to spirit. Right to the spirit. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, wait, where are you going with Kurt Cobain? I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> spirit. It's, it's no, a Boston it's, movie, it's, and all of a sudden, more than a more feeling, than a feeling. Oh, okay. jumps onto the radio. More than a feeling. And that's what's going off as he drives away. That would be a terrible, terrible ending. Pretty terrible. So for some reason, because of the car, I picture him driving away to sweet emotion. No? Okay. Very, very much like uh, the end of uh, um, Days and Confused. That's what I'm feeling. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That was so, like a baritone Steven Tyler, and I didn't know where you were going with that. I was like, <laughs> what key is he in right I now? I wasn't in the key. <laughs> I was, I was at transcending keys. So, 
you know, I was thinking about this and I was like, okay, he's getting in a car. He's going to go see about a girl. Well, what's the real motivation here? And it made me think of a, of a band that many people know for other songs that are, you, you may not realize who Better. they are, but it's a, it's a band called Dr. Hook. <laughs> and they, they made a, an amazing song called Cover the Rolling Stone, which is what they're no, kind of known for. And oh, on yeah. that same album is another song. And I'd like to play it for you because nobody knows it. But this is the song that this is the proper motivation of why he's going to go you see about a girl. Start each day with a song. <laughs> Yeah, he's just trying, looking for pussy. He's looking for pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that he's a, got a line on it though. It's already. <laughs> it, it, it's not the same. I mean, if he doesn't know where she lives, I guess he's got to figure it out. I'm just saying. Well, this this is what I mean. We, this exposes a weak spot in the. Is there any pussy home? <laughs> this exposes a weak spot in the movie, which is. You know, they, he makes reference to, to Sean. He's like, oh, you know, I know, I've slept with a few women, you know. But like, no, he says he's been laid big time. Big oh, time. he's been laid big time. Big I forgot. Time. Yeah. So, so, but like, we don't see any other women kind of circling at the bar or any. Like, he's the kind. Like, isn't he the best looking of the four guys? I mean, is it Chucky? A hundred percent, he's the best looking. Yeah, and like, he's clearly like got chops. He's personable and smart. Like, how? Why do we not get the feeling like Will Hunting is like in high demand? But he leaves the bar the first time that that equation's on the board, and he like knows I gotta yeah, solve that shit. Don't see like he there. leaves it, and they're like, "What the fuck? You're leaving?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm leaving." And I feel like he's the dude that just kind of like ninjas out a lot of times, where he's just like, "I'm bouncing. Nobody's gonna know because they're gonna end up fucking a bunch of girls that I'm not interested in, and I'm not like really. Kathy. Yeah, what? She, she's, missing she's, she's missing a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> she's new. She's missing a tooth. Well, <laughs> all right. She's got the skin condition. <laughs> Anything else uh, we need to say oh, about this movie no. before we wrap it up, fellas? I don't know. I, don't know. I got so much stuff I want to say, but we've already gone like 18 hours, so <laughs> I guess we should. Hey, this is a one-year anniversary show. We can go as long as we want. Anybody catch the uh, Hollywood foreshadowing of uh, Will wearing the um, Cobra jacket? Ah, the sh- yeah, the Shelby jacket. The Shelby jacket. He was wearing that when he was uh, in one of the sessions. Really? Mm-hmm. Who would have known that little Hollywood 20 years later he's playing Carol Shelby? Mm-hmm. I think they might have known. That's why they did it. Probably. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap it up then. So I'm convinced. <laughs> next week we are going to be drafting. Oh man! Of course, the most memorable Matt Damon characters. Mont Damon. But, but what's happening that's going to be so special about this new draft? Because uh, Scotch Beck is now a full and permanent member of the Bev's Video Kingdom podcast. He is no longer. The auto judge, mm-hmm. which means that I am going to make my judging debut. He's so excited. It was funny because when I when I first thought about this, like we were texting about it, and I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, someone's got to take the bullet and judge. And then all of a sudden, I realized, like, wait, oh, it's me. I get to pass judgment on all you guys' <laughs> shitty teams. And, well, and then you said, and I am a Matt judge. Matt and, I, and, and, and yeah, expert. it's like in some ways, it's like instead of having to be limited to one dra- team, I get to weigh in and like sort through all of the teams because mm. I do consider myself a Damon expert. I was going to say, and this is a good draft for you because you love Matt Damon's hairless face. I love I love me some Matt Damon. Yeah. He's got a lot of moles on his cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder how he shaves. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't because he doesn't grow any facial hair. That's true. I thought about that. All right. So <laughs> we will see you back here at Bev Studio Kingdom next week to kick off our second year with Matt Damon. Happy one year, y'all. Mm. Wait, next episode, we might have Matt Damon on to talk about his facial hair. <laughs> bye bye. I want to be at Beverly's bringing me home with my movies just as my body. Nate's I can grab your favorite podcast, the start.